Tonight, the premium grade blend of Scholastic Sports in America, Texas High School Football, the National Sport of Texas. In 2021, the 12 time district champion and two time state champion Cedar Park Timberwolves aim for yet another deep round playoff run. For the 14th season, this is Cedar Park Football on Flow Sports, powered by Vibe Live. Sponsors of Timberwolf Football are Toyota of Cedar Park, HEB, Rudy's Barbecue, Mungio Real Estate. Alzer's Barbecue, T.J. Lewis Real Estate, Brooklyn Heights Pizza, and Wapped Bank. Now, let's go on the road for the pregame show, along with producer Cecil Kokenauer and analyst Josh Willard. Bringing you the play-by-play -play tonight is the voice of the Timberwolves, Brad Cole. Time for some Friday Night Lights. It's the National Sport of Texas, the premium grade blend of scholastic sports in America, Texas high school football, Cedar Park, and Maynard. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Maynard, Texas, and Mustang Stadium, where tonight the Timberwolves end their district campaign against the Maynard Mustangs. You're watching live on Flow Sports TV, powered by the Vipe Network. We've been broadcasting Cedar Park football under various name changes since 2008. This is our 173rd broadcast game. I'm the so-called V of the T, Brad Cohn, and I'll have the play-by-play -play tonight. I need to start off with some important news. We've gone into this weekend's slate of games with the possibility of missing the playoffs, a loss to Maynard, coupled with a Georgetown win over Weiss, a Hendrickson win over Pflugerville. Would end our season tonight. Here's a score from last night. Weiss 63, Georgetown 42. This means we can finish no lower than a tie for third, either with Georgetown, with whom we own the head-to-head -head tiebreaker, or Georgetown and Hendrickson. And in that three-way point differential, it's Hendrickson that gets left out. So congratulations to the Timberwolves on their 14th consecutive playoff trip. Tonight becomes a settling of whether we travel in the first round or get to host a first-round game. Joining me with color and analysis tonight, lifetime Timberwolf Josh Willett. Thank you so much, Brad. So excited to be here, and it's unbelievable that we've blinked our eyes and we're here at the end of the regular season. I just wish football was year-round, and that's yeah. how we can solve that issue. 40-game season. Yeah, that's right. But, uh, I mean, tonight, even though that we don't have a shot at the district crown and we're guaranteed a spot in the playoffs, you cannot look past these Maynard Mustangs that are catching fire, highly explosive on the offensive side, and they can definitely implement their game plan on the defensive side. So it's going to be a great test for our Timberwolves, but we've got to execute tonight. And with additional commentary and technical production, our chief engineer, Cecil Kokenauer. Thanks, Brad. Oh, man, tough one tonight, man. I had a little trouble getting to the stadium tonight, but we got it all together. We're here, um, and uh, hopefully we get to see a, a Cedar Park victory. Really, really glad we uh, we made it to the playoffs. It's been kind of a tough season, but, but here we are. And you're right, Josh, man, that end of the season came fast. <laughs> And our quality assurance monitor tonight is Deandra McBenu. Hey, Deandra, thanks for joining us. Josh and I hosted special teams performers as our guests on Timberwolf Night in America Tuesday night from Santa Catarina. We had a great visit with Raylan Barr, Connor Schutte, Eli Lackey, Isaiah King, and Dylan Hufford. Join Josh and me this coming Tuesday night, November 9th, from 7.30 to 9, when our guests will be the athletic trainer. A lot of fun with that Timberwolf Night in America episode of the special teams unit, Raylan Barr. We figured out that he actually got the kicking bug from Justin Bohr. Yeah. He is a soccer player, so this is his first year playing bar football, and it's varsity football as a kicker. So, And shout-out to Raylan Barr. Had some clutch kicks in that game last week against Weiss. That really kept us in it. But then also at Timberwolf Night in America, we've had a lot of seniors, a lot of underclassmen in this group on the special teams unit. That was good to see. All right, Cedar Park and Maynard played five times, three times in district games, twice in the playoffs. The Timberwolves lead the series four wins to one. Cedar Park has won all the district games and beat the Mustangs in the 2012 state semifinals a week before our first state championship. But one of the most bitter losses in program <laughs> yeah. history came two years ago in the third round when a Maynard team that Cedar Park had completely obliterated three weeks earlier in the regular season finale. It was 42-10 to 10 at halftime. 
somehow managed to beat the Timberwolves 17-14 and end that season. And I remember that first meetup that we had was in that state semifinal game over at Berkelbeck in Georgetown. And still to this day, one of the biggest hits in high school football history happened against Thomas Middleton on a kick return. <laughs> and that was by far one of the biggest hits I've ever seen live. Uh, but that's what you kind of get with this now rivalry now that they have won um, that big playoff game in the third round. And they kind of caught Cedar Park sleeping, the most fog you've ever seen in a football game ever. Um, but Cedar Park has definitely controlled this rivalry per se. And tonight, though, you've got a very inspired Maynard Mustangs team that's riding a lot of momentum. Yeah, that was a that was a really strange game. It was crazy foggy, and then it just lifted. But uh, for some reason, Cedar Park couldn't get anything done that night. We just kind of stalled out. That was a tough game, and then definitely not one of the funnest ones I've ever been uh. to. But um, <laughs> they turned it around next season and handed handed it to them. So, um, uh, you know, here we are again tonight. You know, uh, but both of these teams they they don't have a they don't have a, a good taste on their mouths for each other, and and you know I. Th Either way this goes, I mean, I think this is going to be a, a pretty darn good game. After several disappointing losses this season for Cedar Park, they've got one streak still going. They're on a 12-game road district winning streak. The only significant type of winning streak they've got going. Maynard is 7-2 and two overall, 5-1 and one in district. Their win last week over Anderson, a whole bunch to not much, uh, clinched a playoff slot for them. They lost their opener 28-7 to LBJ, then won six straight before falling big, 44-19 to Weiss two weeks ago. That's good. We were right there with Weiss to the very end, and they lost 44-19 to the Wolves. The Mustangs have a sophomore quarterback in Jason Zardavet. South of New Hope Road on the southbound side of 183A. Find them online at toyotaofcedarpark.com. Army Ant Moving calls Cedar Park home. They are Cedar Park movers that you can count on. Army Ant Moving stands above the rest. Their reputation speaks for itself. They received the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last two years. Their staff is professionally trained and certified, so you can be assured that your cherished household possessions are in good hands, whether you're leaving, arriving, or just relocating to the Cedar Park area. Call them today for a fast, free, and competitive moving quote at 800-497-5828. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or mungiarealestate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. At Wafed Bank, formerly Washington Federal, working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafed Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposits over 32000 ATMs, free checking, Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800-324-937.
Nobody had black, all black uniforms until we first did it in 2000. For several years, we were the only team that ever had all black uniforms. Then I remember Austin Bowie got some. So a couple other people started getting in the middle of that decade. But we were the trendsetters there as well. Captains for Cedar Park this year. Cody Marshall, Kevin Adams, Josh Pell, Jake McAnally, Cole Valiente, Connor Mason, Ian Ferguson, and Big Murr. Murray Robinson, who caught a touchdown pass last week. Don't rub it in, Brad. I played slot for Cedar Park, never logged a catch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been decided. Cedar Park's going to go southbound, left to right, and they will receive. And, yep. I mean, it, it's really – so who's the receiving? I'm sorry, I missed that. We are receiving, and we're going left to right. And we're going to need a healthy dose of Kevin Adams coming off uh -huh. his best career game, 33 carries, 183 yards, a healthy 5.5 average last week. Not able to find the end zone, though. That's going to be super important for this Cedar Park offense to finish drives, not with field goals. we got to get in the fun zone. You know, Cedar Park only got in the red zone twice. Uh, they had a long field goal from outside the red zone, one from inside of it. And a touchdown pass to Murray inside of it. That was the only two times they got in the red zone, and they both turned them to scores. Most of Kevin's Adam, Adams' yards are in the middle of the field. And here's the national anthem. All right, National Anthem. And, guys, I always say this every time, but the National Anthem, I like it better when it's played by a band. Absolutely. No, it's giving that nice live band touch. I love that bass drum and the cymbal right after it. We were kind of getting involved with that. And simple. Boom chish. Very simple. Simple. It's great. Michael Scott, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> so Cedar Park will receive. They'll go with well, whatever small win there is at their back. North to south, that's left to right across your laptop keyboard. And I'm going to have to use your pen because I changed shirts and left my pen. Oh, sure. Yep, thank have you, sir. It. I got one. Hey, I brought you one, too. Ah, There we go. That's just Always bring a pen for Josh. I'm telling you, if I'm in a foxhole, I want this broadcast team. <laughs> <laughs> Never bring a pencil to a pen fight. That's right. Timberwolves wearing their all whites tonight. Mainer in a black and red jersey. A very shiny, good looking crimson helmet with a Mustang on the side, white pants. I always said red and black was a great color combination until my dad told me about NC State University, and now I think that's the worst combination. <laughs> I'm a Tar Heel, though, that's what you get. Kind of like the University of Houston feel when you look at it on TV. It's got UH. Kind of not very enthusiastic. It says. Uh, in the middle of the field, you know, not really enthusiastic for football. And there it says, mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 at least they've got something in the middle field. Wish we had something. All right, here comes the kickoff. So Cody Marshall and looks like Houston Molinaro with no Nick Gruyon. Yeah, folks may not have known that. Nick Gruyon has an injury that's keeping him out this week. There's the kick. Low line drive is going to go out. Nope, to be fielded at the five by Molinaro. Up this right sideline, corralled at about the 22, and somewhere around there is where Cedar Park will start. 
That was flirting with the sideline right there, but Houston Molinaro not going to give it a chance to stay in bounds and just scoops it up, gives them a good field position to start. And offensively, we got to start off fast. We cannot try to ease into the game plan. Um, definitely some three, a quick three-step game to get the ball out quick, very similar to what Dior Bradfield and Weiss did last week. That's kind of the game plan that we need to roll with today. So here comes Pell and company movers. Ready for our first play. We've got three receivers split to the left, one to the right. One on the right is Joseph Edgett. As that should have been thrown towards more of the middle of the field so he could bend away from that coverage. Uh, but nonetheless, you see some good things right there. We just got to follow and execute. Line of scrimmage for the punt will be the 32. Got positive yardage in the first two plays and 0-0-0 zero, zero, zero on the next three. Shooty with the kick. Great kick. Nice kick. Nice bounce. Wow. Goodness gracious, where is that going to end up? <laughs> Just going to lean forward out the window. Let's go all the way down to the 18. So that is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 yard punt <laughs> by Connor Judy. And Connor, nice job. Yeah, Connor was awesome at Timberwolf Night in America. And we just kind of asked, you know, like, what does it mean when you're going to be called the varsity punter? And he was just saying that he wants to be effective in helping his team. And as a young kid like that, already having that mentality, that's exactly what you want. Jason Zardovets. Brings his team out. From the 17? 17, yeah. Yep. So let's make that a 51-yard punt. Give him every yard we can. Joiner hit in the backfield. Fumble, Ball fumble, fumble. Oh. Cedar Park, have they picked it up or not? No, I don't think they did. Oh. Oh. Wow, I think somebody was thinking about scoop and score instead of just falling on us, what yeah. it looked like to me. Yeah, and how can you not when not, how many defensive touchdowns we've scored over the last three seasons, um, So and especially that close. That close, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But still, nonetheless, gives him a, you know, kind of shoots himself in the foot right here. We've got to take advantage Plus of the field position. Back to the eight. That's a minus nine on the play. Throwing deep down the left sideline into coverage. Incomplete. Looks like six with the coverage for us, and that is uh, Michael Putney. Yeah, great job by Putney on that, that coverage. He stayed with them the whole time, and the quarterback never took his eyes off the receiver he wanted to throw to. Yeah, that was a one-two-step throw, and at the same time, you've got Che Nabuku, who's committed to Pittsburgh, as runs a 4-3-40. You've got to give him a chance instead of throwing a ball straight up into the air like that. It gave Putney great coverage opportunity to close. Well, Putney on Nabuku in the coverage is going to be one of the big stories of the night, whether we're successful there or not will go a long way to determining if we can win this game and take second place in the district. Third and long. Sanavets at the goal line. Moving left. Throwing up the left sideline. Oh. Uh, he caught that. Made the catch. Short. Not enough for the first down. They needed 19. He got 17. Oh, big decision time right here for Maynard. You are back in your own territory, but I mean, with the success they've had this season, I like to think I'd try to take something right here on Cedar Park and try to make it happen. I might go for it, too. <laughs> I mean, you went to Cedar, we, Cedar Park with the state last year. Everybody's gunning for Cedar Park, oh, trying yeah. to give them their best. So, I mean, I, but taking a lot of time to get subs in, 10 seconds on the play clock. Nabucco is out. shrugging and shaking his fist oh. because of that. <laughs> I mean, but how well Maynard's defense now, stacked up on that first possession, I'm not too, you know, hesitant to just send it deep. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, they also, the timeout might be, because they couldn't get the people in who want to talk about what play they're going to run, but it also could be they're going to think it over and think, it's early in the game. We're way back in our own territory. <laughs> Maybe we have I might have I might have been speaking on emotion, me going for it. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Glad you're with us tonight. Brad Cohn, Josh Willard, Cecil Kokenauer here for Vipe and Flow Sports TV. Final regular season game of the year here in 2021. Not the best of our seasons, but still a winning record and a chance to finish as the runner-up in the district. We were toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, clearly the best team in the league last week at 20-20 to -20 with three minutes left and somehow still lost that game. The district title on the line, but next best thing is to get second. So here we are tonight. Short yardage situations. They got a lot of speed. Look for jet sweep motions. Oh. Straight to Joiner into the line, <laughs> and oh. he goes forward and gets the first down. He needed two, and he got three. 
Yeah, there was no disguising that right there and went into an empty formation with two H-backs right behind the guards and uh, just kind of plowed up the A-gap, easy first down. Now, just like the Weiss game, when we did not get an early, early fumble deep in their territory, and it, you never know how that affects the game. We did not get one here, and they worked the first down out of it. Chavez takes a snap, gives off to Joyner, right side, a big hole. Still going, a missed tackle, 50, 40, 30, and he could go all the way, and he did. 72-yard touchdown, and that does not bode well for Cedar Park. Yeah, Big was, hole to run through and a couple of easily missed tackles. Yeah, that was a, an opportunity for Cedar Park to let an explosive run go by for a first down, but we had position, players in position to wrap up and bring them down. Uh, but a great cut, too, when he got to the safety level by Joyner to get to that sideline, and then Joyner showcasing that speed going all the way down the sideline. Uh, that was a good opening possession for Maynard when they had to convert a fourth down deep in their own territory. Yeah, boy, that hurts now that we did not get that fumble or did not stop that fourth down play. Snap, kick, up, looks good. It is good. 9-0-1 in the first, not even three minutes in. And what looked like it could have been a great start for us is instead a bad one. Down 7 and up in the mayor. We'll be right back. <laughs> In the battle for barbecue supremacy, warriors pit prime meats, secret sauces, and recipes against one another. Yet one champion stands alone. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue in the modern day vernacular, where bad means good. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue has the worst barbecue in Texas. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football, the Maynard Mustangs, and Quentin Joyner exploding for a touchdown to take the lead 7-0 with 9-1 to go in the first. And there's the kick, a little higher, not as deep at the 11 now, Molinaro on this side, straight up the numbers. It's out across the 30 to about the 33, and that's where Cedar Park will start. I love how Houston, whenever he gets the football on a kickoff return, he just goes from 0 to 100 real quick and I love that there's no hesitation from him and with that return or with the coverage team coming downfield and if you're going the opposite direction full speed it's going to be very hard for them to change direction and get in front of you so Houston gives us some good field position to start he's also very elusive in his first move the first guy looks like he didn't get him suddenly he's grabbing for air almost every time comes Josh Pell and his troops Adams in the backfield with him two receivers to the right two to the left Adams in motion out to the left. He looks at him. He's going to throw a slant to the left side incomplete. Hit hard right when the ball got there. Cody Marshall couldn't bring it in. Second down. Cody Marshall intended receiver, but Carter Well was doing an outside slant. And when Pell looked right at Cody Marshall, that safety bit down, and Carter Well had no one in front of him for a touchdown. Second down, 10 from the 33. On the right hash. Turn, give to Adams. Adams trying to pick his way through what isn't a hole. Only gets two to the 35, third and eight. And that's kind of been the tail of the tape for Cedar Park's offense this year. We've been bogged down so many times to get in these third and long situations. So the playbook gets very small, and you've just got to execute. But it starts up front with the Doughboys. We've got to give Pell time. Two receivers left, one right. Tight end on the line. Play action fake, throwing over the middle. Has a man, it's Marshall at midfield to the 40 and top stopped at the 38 near the sideline. Big gainer in the first down for Marshall. And he's down. Cody Marshall's down, slow to get up. Ah, he's under up under his own power. Yeah, he's good. One of the Maynard players kind of tripped over him while they were falling out of bounds. I think it's just kind of, kind of a little shin-to-shin -shin collision. 
been so focused on giving you the right angles tonight. I couldn't see. It looked like Cody Marshall's man might have just fallen down right there in the middle of the coverage, and Cody Marshall I think that's right. did a great job of getting towards the sideline, getting inside Mustang territory. 27 yards on the gain in the first down. Another play action fake. Throwing. Oh! Next catch. A little one-handed grab right there nice on the sideline. Nice by Grant wow. Nichols. Okay, okay. Not a lot of yards, just four, but a spectacular catch. Okay. They just threw his big paw out there and just snagged it. My Lord. His second catch of the night already. Second and about six. Adams with the give. Nothing there. Uh, only back to the line. And we're not getting a good push outside, and you like to think that maybe we can get a blocking tight end, Grant Nichols, on that left side, and maybe he could help chip that DN, get to the linebackers. We maybe need to start running these. Uh, zone reads and getting them to the outside because up the middle, I know we're trying to soften them up here in the beginning of the game, but we've got to get yards on first and second down. Third and six for the Mainer 34 on the right hash. Kyrie Nicholson now in the backfield. Molinaro in motion right to left. Fake to Nicholson. Rolling right is Pell. He's going to run. He should have the wow. first down and a little bit more. He's going to go all, oh, about the 22. That's a 13-yard gain in a first. I love that from Pell. His first option right there in the flat was completely covered up, but it was in position to kind of turn and block. He didn't even hesitate. He tucked that ball, got the first. Brings him up to the line now in good tempo. The snap, play action fake. Rolling left, looking, under some pressure. He's just going to throw it out of bounds. Ooh, almost threw it out of bounds. It was a catch. <laughs> I've assumed he was throwing it out of bounds, and instead – he hits Carter Well. Excellent job by Carter Well to come to to come back to the ball as that as that play broke down and gave Pell a chance. Gain of seven on the play from the fifteen. Back to throw. Oh, Cross the the middle, bench. yeah. A guy holds there it up. There it Finally, is. the flag comes from the referee in the back of the end zone. I mean, that was too easy to call. I mean, that's beyond the five-yard mark. He was breaking the route to bend in, and that was on target on point. I know his receiver's eyes weren't turned around, but at the same time, that knocked him off his route completely. you got to throw it. All right, where are they going to put him there? Should be half the distance around the eight-yard line. Okay. Oh, we'll take him anytime penalty. we can get him, baby. Hell brings him up now. But this, again, the field is short. We've got to capitalize. First and goal from the eight on the left hash. Rolling right. Looking in the end zone. <gasps> oh. Just incomplete. Oh. And that was intended for Joseph Edwards, number eight. I thought he was going to hit Houston Molinaro right at the goal line, but that sail just passed and almost connected in the back corner of the end zone. First targeting of Edwards in two games. He did not throw to him in the last game. First time they've thrown to him in this game. Second and goal from the eight. Slant. Money. Slant to the left side. <laughs> <laughs> catch for the touchdown. Oh, so we Is that eight. well or, or Houston? Houston. Houston Martin. You could tell that's a 13 or an 18. From eight yards out, so let's see if they get the look they want on the try for two. I still think I, I, every time I see 13, I'm flashing Gunner Absick. <laughs> I know, me Golly. too. Golly. They didn't, so they're sending in the kicking team to kick it in and try for the tie. Molinaro's first catch is a touchdown on the night. Great job by that offensive lineman, and again, we're down senior captain Cole Valiente, who had a ankle injury in that Pflugerville game two weeks ago, and Isaac Barksdale taking over the helm at center, and he's done a phenomenal job. Raylan Barr, guest Tuesday night, one of several the special teams on Timberwolf Night in America, and <laughs> I think they might have listened to your rant on TNIA because they didn't burn a timeout right there. They just took the delay a game. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. That was my rant. The timeout's more important than I the mean, five yards, yeah. especially on extra point. People burning timeouts, you know, to kick from the 43 to 48. It's a valid point. So back to the 15-yard line, a 25-yard extra point. Snap is high. Marshall picks up, and he's running right, looking for something he can do with the ball. Oh, no. And there's nothing. They hit him at the 20, and he goes down. So it's 7-6. Seven to 7-0-2 six. Seven oh left in the first. We didn't tie it, but at least 
Touchdown for a touchdown. We'll be right back after this. Oh, no. It's got a little power. Equipment and technology to ensure their Toyota certified technicians work quickly and efficiently on your cars, trucks, and SUVs. Using genuine OEM parts, of course, and from college graduates and military rebates to service agreements that keep your Toyota running smoothly, their finance team will provide you with all the information you need. They are excited to be your Toyota dealer here in Cedar Park. That's Toyota of Cedar Park at toyotaofcedarpark.com. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football on the Flow Sports Network, powered by Vipe Live Network. Cecil Coconauer here, Brad Cohn, Josh Willard, and we just scored a touchdown, so we want to say thank you to T.J. Lewis Real Estate. Realty. Ah, thank you, Cecil. Got our six. Cedar Park to kick off now. 7-6 the score, as Cecil said. Big play. Got him down close. Pell eight yards to Molinaro for the score. Here's the kick. Fielded at about the seven near the right hash. Coming back towards this near side now. Trying to turn the corner. Slips down at around the 20. 20 or 21, about a 13-yard return for Maynard. He's not going to get a charge with the tackle because he slipped on a banana peel. But number 21, Eli Lackey, did a great job as that outside gunner pushing downfield. And as that return specialist tried to bounce it back a few yards and get to the outside, it just created a lot of opportunity for everybody to swarm to the football and not give up a big return. So here comes Quentin Joyner, Jason Zardavets, and the Maynard Mustang. Nursing now a one-point lead. Direct snap. Running, direct snap. Runs right side. Going to lose a yard. That was there. A lot of Timberwolves getting up from the bottom. Jake McAnally is one of them. Also, who was that? Uh, Christian Cockrell. That was Chain of Bluku. I mean, they're going to try to find a way to get him the ball as many times as possible. But Cedar Park, that's just as soon as they line up, you've got to locate him in the formation. Loss of a yard on the play. Second down. Back to throw is Zardovets. Slant left side is complete. Good yardage. He gets through a bunch of busted tackles all the way to the 45. Remainer first down. Man, hey, was, oh, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I, he, he's likely to get that ball off. There was a ton of pressure there. Lots of hands up and in his face. A lot of big bodies right in his throwing lanes. Uh, that, that, I don't know if there's a whole lot more that the defense can, can, can do on that play except for, except for you know, on first contact make the tackle. They were, they were lucky to get that off. First and ten, Maynard. That's their fourth of the game. And their 45. The snap. Zardovets gives off to Joyner. Mm. Missed tackle in the backfield, and he drags a linebacker several yards. Gain of six across midfield to our 49, second and four. We're making great contact. You've got to wrap up and bring him down. That was right at the line of scrimmage, and it ended up being a healthy six-yard carry. Back to the line now. A couple receivers to each side. Mabuko is the slot on this near side, the left side. Zardavet takes the snap, gives to Joyner. Oh. Dances out of a, a stop hold. in the backfield, and he's going to have the first down on a five-yard carry. I think Cecil's right. They're going to get him for holding, but, I mean, Murray Robinson at that nose tackle position did a great job of just throwing that center out of the way, but Quentin Joyner did a side shuffle step about four yards to the left, so everybody missed when they went and high-pointed that football, too, to go make a great catch and a turnover to get Cedar Park some momentum. So now here comes Josh Pell. And we're from our 44. Right hash. One receiver right, one left. Two wings give to the running back going to the right side. Not much there. Is there another flag? A face mask. Should be, yeah. And I mean, that was a great read by Pell. Held that mesh until the last second. And Tyree did a good job getting outside. But that trailing defender, he I think he grabbed some face mask on that one. Two-yard run by Tyree. Let's see what they do. Personal foul face mask on the defense. So add 15 to that two-yard run. It's a first down, our sixth. 
Our sixth first down, but a big one as it gets inside Mustang territory. So now we've got to be very selective. Um, just got to keep taking shots. Keep your foot on the gas pedal. Yeah, all gas. No brakes. From the 38 now, right hash, first and 10. Pell takes oh. to Adams, hits a guy in the flat, turns. He's going to have some yardage, enough for the first down. And that was Grant Nichols. He's going to get about 14. We've been lulling him to sleep with that read option right there. And the great job by Josh Pell pulling that quickly and getting it immediately out to Grant Nichols so he can catch and run. Seventh first down of the game, quickly back to the line. Play action fake, throws again to the left side. Cody Has Marshall. a man, Cody Marshall. It's going to be a short game, but a positive one. About three and a half yards, and I'm going to round it up to four. I love the pre-snap uh, motion with Cody Marshall and then play faking him and just dishing it right back to him in the flats. Cody Marshall super effective with the rock in his hands. Second down, about six. Left hash, back to throw his Pell, looking. Good protection. He throws to the end zone right oh. side, but overthrows a guy at about the two. Second down. A little trip up there at the top of the route, but I think both players were turned to look for the football, so that's incidental contact and a big incompletion to bring us to third and medium. Third and about six. Balls of the 21. Pell, flash and fake, throw, slant, and that one is picked. Running to his left side near us, out to the 30, and Maynard answers a pick to the pick. Very frustrating right there because that was the right play call, just something quick so you yep. can try to get I into agree. a fourth or short or make a move to make a, a you know, to extend the ball for the first down. And I, I couldn't tell. I was watching on the camera. I couldn't tell if that was behind or tipped or um, just looked like a little bit off target and maybe a little bit too hard. Sometimes you need to have a little bit of softer touch to those guys before they can get their eyes around. Yeah, it looked a little bit behind him. Hit off of his hands slightly into the air right in front of the Maynard defender. And he just picked it up and went. 29. From there, 29 now. First and 10, left hash. Zardavets with Quentin Joyner in the backfield. Turns, fakes to him. Zardavets runs right side and falls down. <laughs> it looks like looks like he saw Ethan Becker and just said, no, I'm going down. Yeah, it, was, it looked like a little miscommunication because running back ran to the opposite side of that mesh, so a little busted play, but a heads-up play by the quarterback to try to make something out of nothing. Unfortunately, it was less than nothing, minus one yard. Everybody but Joyner has negative rushing yardage. Let's keep that trend. Yeah. Second and 11. Gives to Joyner. Into the line, puts his head down, spins around and backs forward a little bit for a couple to the 30. It'll be third and nine. Big play for the Black Ring. And it's sad that I had to hold my breath on that play because that's <laughs> the exact same thing that he's been doing all game in extending plays. So that's the swarming type of football that we need to have when they're trying to run it right up the middle. You can't let them buy Big Murr, Brandon Payne, and Ian Ferguson. No. Swallow those guys up. Opportunity right here, Brad. we got to get to the quarterback and get him off his spot. Third and nine from the 30. Zardavets back to throw. Throws left side. Got a man complete at midfield, and he's still running. Finally bring him down at about the 24. I mean, a great job by the quarterback right there. He was rolling to his right and just put his foot in the turf because he saw the over-pursuing Black Ray defense taking away the outside edge and just threw a, a, a dime. Uh, into Cedar Park territory, a big play on third down again. If we stop them on third and fourth down, come on. Man. I know. It's been the story all year, though. We're good on first and second, and we give up big chunks on third and four. Fifth first down of the game for the Mustangs, 45 yards on that game. 25-yard line, fake to Joyner. He's going to be an option pitch. Same guy just caught the ball coming around. He's at the 10-5, and he should be in if they call it. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football here on Flow Sports TV, powered by the Vibe Life Network. Brad of Cone, Cecil Kokenauer, Willard of Oz, giving you all the stuff with DeAndre McBenu as our QA tonight as the Mustangs tack on 14-6 the lead with 2.34 to go as the ball carrier from Cedar Park, Houston Molinaro, takes the kickoff return all the way out to the 31. Again, great field position. It's a 21-yard return for Molinaro. He's had all of our returns tonight. It's 
averaging 20.3, 17, 23, and 21. That's too many kickoff returns for one half. We don't want that. For one half, talk about one quarter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here comes the offense again. Behind the eight ball once again, so to speak, eight points. Trips to the left, a single to the right. That's Edwards to the right. Kevin Adams in the backfield with Pell. Gives it to Adams. Goes through the middle still. Not a lot of blocking there. It's tough to bring him down, but they do after he gains three to the 34, second and seven. A very nice forward progress. We'll take that, but the Mustangs just did a great job, and there's just no push from this offensive line when we're trying to get downhill, establishing the run. Nichols now to this near side along with Edwards. Marshall well to the other side. Back to throw is Pell. Just going to tuck it and run to the right. Should have enough for the first down and goes out of bounds. A big gainer on the play. Of 10, 15, 19 yards to midfield. Don't underestimate Pell's legs. We're going to need that football IQ tonight. And a great job. Grant Nichols was there in the flats but just turned and blocked. Gave uh, Josh Pell the corner easy. Pell with the next snap. Play action fake. Throws deep over the middle. Has a man. Leaves it a little short. Caught nonetheless by Cody Marshall down to the 24 first down. Weapon X, I am so glad you're on the offensive side of the ball. Great job by Cody Marshall just getting lost behind coverage and Pell locating that receiver, getting inside Mustang territory. We're taking good chunks right here. We just got to keep up. First and misses. Nicholson gets oh. away from a tackle. But at best, I think he just gets back to the line. And it's going to be Maynard's football. Mm. Yeah, there wasn't really much disguising right there. They didn't try to get any pre-snap motion to create some confusion and, you know, movement on the defense. They just lined up, went right at the middle. Um, and, and, again, not much push. Yeah, it's uh, going through the air might have to be the way to go and trusting Pell's legs. If, it's a, if everybody's covered up, he has that ability to tuck and run. Missed opportunity again. Black Rain's out there again. We're in white tonight. From their 15. Yep, from their 15 yard line, first and 10 from Maynard, closer to the left hash than the right. The snap, Joyner into the middle, hit in the backfield. This time he's going to go down under pressure. Big Murr was there. Kind of just sat on him and crushed him into the ground. You take away that 72 yarder, he's a minus nine, three, six, two, and zero. <laughs> I mean, that. That's, I know. It's the big play that's always been the Achilles heel yes. of the Cedar Park team. We generally give up 60 to 70% of the offense we give up in a game on about 6% of the plays. End of the first quarter, trailing Maynard 14 6. We'll be back in just a minute. At Wafed Bank, formerly Washington Federal, working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafed Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposits over 32,000 ATMs, free checking, Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800-324-9375. The service department at Toyota of Cedar Park engages the latest equipment and technology to ensure their Toyota certified technicians work quickly and efficiently on your cars, trucks, and SUVs. Using genuine OEM parts, of course, and from college graduates and military rebates to service agreements that keep your Toyota running smoothly, their finance team will provide you with all the information you need. They are excited to be your Toyota dealer here in Cedar Park. That's Toyota of Cedar Park at toyotaofcedarpark.com. Welcome back to Cedar Park football. Now coming out of the end of the first quarter, Cedar Park trailing 14-6 to with the Maynard Mustangs in the ball. Second and 10. Goes left side. Oh. Stopped in the backfield. Nice play by the Timberwolves. Let's see if I can get the last number who got up. Looked like it was number 20. Outstanding job, Jackson Fortney. And this is the quarterback that just took a nasty hit. He was trying to run the speed option and faked it towards the outside and decided to keep it. Big Murr was there on the stop. Uh, quarterback is getting up under his own power, but he's limping. He is limping, and they're going to bring him off. And so 15, is he, Zavertis, he's a senior. 
Like to see Other quarterbacks, they got listed to Condre Jeffrey as a junior. Don't be surprised they put Chayna Buku there. Damian Salazar as a junior. But you're right, they could just go wildcat it. I mean, but again, Brad, we have an opportunity now with third and 12. I mean, defensive backs keep everything in front, and this D-line, if you're not inspired to go lay on the quarterback right now, I don't know what else is going to get you inspired. They've got Joyner back there in the, in the Wildcat here on third and 12. He's going to run to the right side, back towards the middle, and he just keeps getting away from missed tackles. He is on his way on another big, long run up the right sideline. Can they take him out of bounds? No. And Quentin Joyner is going to take what should have been a no-game play, 77 yards to the house, and things look bleak for us, finishing with a ho by hosting a playoff game. A 72-yard touchdown and a 77-yard touchdown. There was so much contact as that run was yeah. with a pulling guard going right up the middle. How we don't swarm to the football and bring him down. Oh, that's going to be a hard one to watch and film tomorrow. So on now with the extra point. I mean, they're trying to stretch the lead. Uh -oh. The snap was bad. The holder is going to try to run to the right side. And he is stopped at about the one. So at least we're even on the missed extra points tonight. And we're sitting here at 20 to 6, not even a minute into the second quarter. Josh, what needs to happen now for the defense? For our defense, we just got to wrap up. That's so simple. Everybody has been in position to make plays. Uh, but the defensive line, I think they're doing a good job of throwing those uh, offensive linemen around, getting into the backfield. But Joyner is making a jump cut very similar to Kevin Adams and yeah. just getting loose. And, I mean, that one right there, that was probably seven missed tackles right there. That, that one really hurts. Um, but offensively, again, it doesn't matter if we don't end in the end zone. So we've got to start keeping up. We've gotten a gift from the football gods with that missed extra point right there. So where we're not completely out of it, it's just two possessions. Seven carries for 151. Oh, my gosh. With those 72, 70-plus 70 touchdown runs, his average is 21.6. <laughs> but outside of those, his average is 0 0.4. Oh, my gosh. So it's just a matter, again, like we've identified before, it's, it's missed tackles. They're getting to him before he can make it a big play to bring him down, and they're just not bringing him down. Oftentimes, four or five guys missing the tackle. And you can wipe all that away and get some momentum back right here if you put yep. together a nice drive and end in a touchdown. Yep, sure could. First time receiving a kickoff in the south side now. You see the part? Houston. Molinero to the 10, near side, comes back towards the middle. Houston finds a hole. Can he get to the sideline? he got to beat the kicker. Stiff arms and the kicker takes him out of bounds at the 39. Outstanding. Uh -huh. That's a 61-yard return. A flag back at our 40. May bring it back to the 30, which would make it a 20-yard return. Very upsetting right there. But Houston Molinaro, again, no hesitation in that return. Just went right towards the middle of the field and made a nice cut to get towards the outside. You hate it when a kicker is the one that saves it. Exciting player, yeah. It's a hold during the return, and that is right in the area where he squirted through yep. kind of unexpectedly, so it probably did make a difference. First penalty of the night on Cedar Park. Only two penalties last week against Weiss, which is a school record. Didn't help us much in the, in the defeat. How many times have we mentioned that a lot of our big wins will have 13, 15 penalties. A lot of our losses, very few. Right. That doesn't make sense, but... <laughs> Normally you want to avoid penalties. Timberwolves starting out first and 10, their own 30, so officially just a 20-yard return for Molinaro on that one. Nobody in the backfield. Three receivers right, one left. He goes in motion now. Pell keeps. Nothing there. Line of scrimmage, second down and 10. Yeah, as much as that play fake with Carter, I mean, just nobody bit for it. Everybody stayed at home, and big number 58 from the Maynard Mustangs did a great job staying at home and bringing them down for the tackle. That was J.T. Thomas, the sophomore. we got to find some way to take advantage of the fairly immobile-looking D-line. i got one guy who looks athletic enough to be mobile. The other guys are kind of roly-poly types. Pell throws, slant, complete to Marshall. On the right side, he keeps dragging people, just keep holding that ball. 
enough for the first down. A gain of 13 out to the 43. When you need a big play, you got to go to the senior. And Weapon X did a great job in traffic using those hands to go get the football, not waiting for it to come to him. And you saw that focus and strength to hold on to the rock. Marshall now four catches for 71 yards. First and 10. Back to throw is Pell. Under some pressure running left. He's going to take it on himself. Out of bounds just past midfield. It's going to be a gain of about, oh, eight to their 49 second down. My man Grant Nichols has had a great game receiving, but so far now that's two busted down pass plays where he's just turned and blocked and given Josh Pell a chance to make a big play. So Grant Nichols, man, he is playing some heads up football tonight. Second down two from their 49. We need their 47. There's the snap into the line. The give to Kevin Adams. He just gets back to the line, third and two. And thankfully got back to the line. Yeah. Probably should have been dropped for a loss of two. So keeping this third and short, that's got to be manageable. We're definitely two down territory. Missed tackle for them on that one. That should be two That's 12 men on the field. Oh, they didn't get him off. And it's complete anyway to Edwards on the outside. It's good for four yards in the first down at their 45, but Josh had a good point. And that, that defender was on the hash mark on the sideline, and I know that's, I mean, that's, you know, not that's softball calling for that penalty, <laughs> but you know what, I'm going to take Take whatever we can get yeah, this year. Yeah, That's right. 11th first down of the game. Pell back to throw, looks right, looks left, looks over the middle. Throws over the middle, has a man at Marshall, the 20, the 15, the 10. Has a guy contact him inside the 5, and he'll make it all the way down inside the 5 to about the 3. Well, Cody Marshall's definitely stepping up and having a great game, but Josh Pell, that was really on him just working through that progression. You saw a little subtle pump fake that really opened up the middle of the field for Marshall. 42 yards on that one. Marshall over 100 yards received. Uh, this time uh, running to the right. Oh, thrown down violently. Little to no gain on the play. It's Kevin Adams. I've never seen him tackle that violently before. Loss of a yard back to the four. Field gets short. Play calls get a little bit harder, and Cedar Park's offensive line has got to take it upon themselves to get into the end zone. This isn't going to be done by the ball carriers. We're going to have to match up and pave away. Either push people back or open a hole. One of the two. Got two different ways you can block for the running game, and we'll take five either one of them. On, five seconds on the play clock. Oh, uh, now you might want to take a timeout. Yeah. yeah cause, uh, <laughs> this is from the nine is a lot different than the <laughs> four, yeah. When you're out here at the 42, it might go back to the 47, no big whoop. But. And what's uh, Cody Marshall's stat line right now? Oh, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. Five catches, 113 yards, 22.6 <laughs> yards a catch for Weapon X. <laughs> And that's the thing. We've got a playmaker that's making plays. They've got one making plays. But the scoreboard is a 14-point differential. And that's just Cedar Park has got to start chipping away slowly. And the Black Rain getting a nice rest right now. They've got to come play some inspired football. 217 total yards of offense for Cedar Park, but only six points. Healthy 9.8 yard per carry average for Josh Pell on those scrambles. Five for 49. Pell's also 11 for 18 with a pick and a touchdown for 153 yards. 61% completion percentage. That's that's great to be at right now. 8.5 yards per attempt is uh, Rydarian numbers. <laughs> His career was about 8.5. Oh, my gosh. How spoiled were we? We were so spoiled. But we knew that at the time. We would talk about that often as those days were going by. <laughs> They're amazing times. All right. Second, Second and goal from the four, right half. Got Grant Nichols with his hand down, tight end on that left side of the formation. Heavy backfield in, no split receivers. Pell gives to Adams. Oh. He is hit in the backfield and taken down. They did not even block the defensive end, a four-yard loss. Yeah, that came right up the middle, and there was just, I mean, the pulling action and then those two heavies, Big Murr and, Brendan Payne going to the how, left side. How does everybody miss that guy? We yeah. had so many blockers in the middle of the formation. That guy comes right through everybody untouched and makes the play. In these kind of situations, I love to have some slot receivers in this formation, and crossing routes are going to be your key right here. You've got to confuse these linebackers. But, shoot, you got to block the defensive line first. So here we go, third down and goal. About the seventh. Back to throw, and he's running. They didn't block again. Throws towards the end zone incomplete. Nobody there. 
He's just dumping it. Is that grounding? It could be. I didn't think he got out of the tackle box, and there was no receiver over there. Nichols, Nichols was at about the 10. I don't know if that's vicinity uh, or not. You know. <laughs> that's, that, Depends that's on your definition of vicinity. <laughs> it was close. So we're going to go for the points here. Field goal team comes on. We've had one botch snap on that one extra point try, so we've really got to focus here. Line of scrimmage is about the 7. So about a 24-yard field goal. They'll hold it, Marshall will, at the 14. Snaps good this time. Ooh. Up, plenty of distance. Does it go through? Yes, it does. Uh, shout out to Weapon X right there, the holder. That was not the best snap. That did kind of fall yeah. right before the tee, and a holder's mentality, pin that football into the turf so it stops the motion. You can get it on the tee. 7.36 left before halftime. New score, Mainer 20, Cedar Park 9. We'll be right back. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or mungiarealestate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football on Flow Sports TV, powered by the Vipe Live Network. Cecil Coconut, we're here. Brad Cohn, Josh Willard. We got uh, 736 left in the second quarter. Cedar Park trails Maynard 2010. Ben Gazer. 29, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, 29. Ben Gazer, the Norwegian Nightmare, kickoff for Cedar Park. Not Geyser. Not Geyser. Love Timberwolf Night America. It's where I can pra practice pronunciations. Some of his kickoffs looks like they were shot up out of a geyser. Yeah, here we go. This one, hard, long, caught. Muffed it. Muffed at the five, picks it back up at the one, heads to midfield. Cedar Park's got great <laughs> coverage, and they stop him. They're going to give him forward motion about the two and a half. Yes. Wow. Based on where he touched the ball, that's about a negative three-yard return. And Excellent. every time that Maynard is catching these returns, they're trying to flip the field. So he caught this on our sideline and retreated back to about the two-yard line to get to the middle of the field to get to the other side. And All that job. time, our coverage is getting yeah. closer to him. Yeah. Our, our backside contained did a great job of closing in, making the field short. The black rain, we have had chance after chance. If we let up an 80-yard touchdown run right here, I might oh just leave. Oh, my gosh. We may just shut down the broadcast. <laughs> Where are they at? Two? They're two. First and ten, Maynard. Ooh, and Cedar Park play. jumped. Free play. Dropped. Catch <laughs> dropping, actually. I guess they're going to get the five Ooh, yards anyway. That, that could have been off to the or, races. Or did we see any? I don't even see. Is there a uh, flag? <gasps> how did could they not that, call it? How could that no, not they have been didn't. a flag? Oh we my. had three guys jump off Ian sides. Ferguson was very close to making contact, too. I don't think he got back in time. Nobody thought, got back in time. I thought that was a great heads-up play. And their quarterback. They probably I'm he, sorry, they, oh, they probably like, rushed it, too, thinking it was a free play. Yeah, 100%. it should have been. Well, you know, sometimes just get lucky. We got lucky on that one. Three guys are clearly offside. Second down, 10 from the two. Play action fake, throws over the middle, has a man complete out to about the nine. That was number four, Ike Essenwuni. That was enough for a first down. down. That was to the 14. 14. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong stripe. And that was very unfortunate. We bit hard on that play fake. Good job by the quarterback really selling that one. And uh, I mean, a tough catch in traffic had a couple defenders all over him. First down for Maynard. They're seventh. We've got a lot more first downs than they do, but not as many points. Give to Joyner. Boy, he is good at holding that ball. He hits the line with both arms around that ball every time. He gets about three. It'll be second and seven. Mainers, I mean, in the last few years, really putting out some big-time D1 athletes, and Tosh Brooks was that running back in that third-round playoff game that we ended up losing, and Taj Brooks now doing great things up at Texas Tech. And then they also had Princely Umenlian, who's now uh, starting defensive end at Florida. 
They've got some big time players. Second down seven from the 16. Zardavax gives to the running back Joyner. He gets wrapped up immediately. First man to him looked to me like it was Ian Ferguson. A loss on the play. What do you know? We're here into a third and long situation, and if they run a half back up the middle, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> if they run a half back up the middle for <laughs> 70 is when I'm going to lose it. This is where, you know, we've got them right where they want us. Third and long, fourth and long. Going to need a big play from those safeties, Dylan Hufford, Luke Koharski. Zardavets back to throw. Good protection going deep down the middle into coverage. Incomplete. Incomplete at about the 44. Intended for 23. That's Isaiah Crosby. Who had the coverage on him there? That was Dylan Hufford. Dylan Hufford. He was our guest the other night. We needed some big play out of those safeties right there, and you knew they were going to probably take a shot with their speed. And Dylan Hufford, that ball's a little bit underthrown, so it gave him time to close and make it very difficult to go catch. And shout out to Mr. Hufford, uh, Dylan's dad. I know he's been listening to us all season and um, pretty sick right now, so we just want to give a shout out to you, thinking about you. Finally, we force a punt. I mean, look for a high snap here, man. Zardavets is the punter. Line of scrimmage about the 15. There it goes. Beautiful punt. It's still rolling. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. First and 10, Timberwolves. Well, there you go, Black Rain. You did your job. You got off the field, pinned them deep with that kickoff return, and gave up only one first down, and then put your heels in the turf and did a good job of standing strong yeah. and giving our offense a chance. 5.32 on the clock. I mean, I would flirt, about points. Try, I'd flirt with trying to take as much of that off as possible. 42 yards on that punt by Jason Zardavet. I just think this offense works at its optimum when they're going full speed. When they're trying to play conservative, that's when things start to not go well for this offense. Molinaro is split to the left. Marshall slot right. Edwards far right. Pell looking. Mm -hmm. Try to set up a pass. screen. Looking for the split end screen to Grant Nichols, who lined up behind the right tackle. Incomplete. 20th attempt of the half for Pell. He's hit 11 of them. I mean, I would like to go back to those big plays we've hit with Cody Marshall. He's been getting open in between the safeties and the linebackers right in the middle of the field. I would love to go back to some of that. Me too. Pell takes the snap. Looks right. Throwing oh, up wide open. Sideline. He's got your man, oh, he's but he leads bounds. him out of bounds. He was wide oh. open. It's going to be a big gainer, 20, 25 yards. Pell, after... Starting out pretty good, has now missed on his last three passes. Yeah, that was one right there. It was a little bit too open and probably just got a little too excited. But great play design with the Cody Marshall faking the block on the screen and just getting loose on the wheel. He had hit 10 of his last 13 until he's missed on his last three. Usa, <gasps> did it hit the ground? And it's, They're going to call it a pick. Picked to the 43 by Maynard. I did not see in my binoculars, I did not see a Cedar Park player anywhere in the frame of my binoculars. Yeah, that looked like a miscommunication between the receiver and quarterback. Receiver at Cedar Park, if you're running a crack route, you're running directly at the safety, and if the safety stays over the top, the receiver's supposed to bend it towards the middle of the field. That's what Cody Marshall looked like he did, and that was just thrown directly to the safety. Two picks in a game for the first time in a half. For the first time for Pell since the opener against Vandy. We had that last possession at our own 43. Now they're starting from their own 43. Trips to the right, a single to the left. Zardovets running right. He was hitting the backfield hard and taken down for a loss. Another good play by Jackson Fortney, the junior linebacker. Man, Jackson Fortney has really come on strong as this linebacking group has kind of had to battle some injuries throughout the year. And, man, Jackson Fortney, great job of not falling for the fake and just taking the quarterback out. Both times he had a couple of hard hits. If you look at him, that's not a big guy. I don't know if he can ride the Superman. I'm just <laughs> but, boy, he lays the wood. Twins to either side now. Second and oh. about 14. Offsides on them because we didn't make contact. Well, we'll see what they say. Looked to me like he got back on time and – or didn't, I mean, didn't get back on time but didn't make contact with it. Yeah. Call it on us. Yeah. Strange, that's a dead ball. And gets those lost yardage back on that first down and then some. 
Only the second penalty of the night against Cedar Park and the fourth in the last game and a half. But we lost the other one and we're losing this one. I guess we need more penalties, Josh. I guess uh, that's how it works. Pick your poison, man. We get 15 Dave. penalties for 135 yards. It's usually a big win. I don't know why. Second down and eight now from the 45. Turn to give the joiner into the line. There you Not go. much there. Just a yard to the 46. Bunch of guys. McAnally, Fortney. Who else is getting up there? Christian Cockrell, Christian Cockrell, Dylan Hufford from the safety position, but you're right, Jake yep. McAnally with first blood right there and did a good job of holding on to those legs and not letting them get loose for more and played great on that last possession on a third and long. We need another one right here. Yeah, it was a great job to, to making making the pooling, uh, the pooling guard there, number 53, just completely whiff on that block. Third and seven from the 46, right in the middle of the field. Start of that's throw, split end screen to the near yes. side, and they got him. Actually going to lose a yard. Nice job by the Black Rain. And who was that? Reed Vines. God, the sophomore did a great job, and that receiver screen was, he was screaming down the line of scrimmage back towards the middle of the field. Reed Vines didn't wait for him to make a cut outside. He just went straight for him and got him down the line of scrimmage. The sophomore linebacker, my goodness. So they'll have to punt for the second possession in a row. Do they, though? Do no, they have no to place to fake. Three and a half minutes up, <laughs> up by two scores. I would, I would they not get, risk they it They get here. the ball coming back at half. Line of scrimmage the 46. Start of Vets gets it away. 38-yard punt. Fair caught at about the 16. That was punter 19 this time. Micah Collins, the uh, tight end. He got everything behind that yeah, one. Yeah, he did. And that was a that was a one step drop punt. That was a boot. <laughs> Maybe Jardovitz is only in there if they've got an option to fake it. Right. Of course, he kicked it four yards farther than this guy. And I'm telling you, we started that trend. Yeah. With the quarterback yeah. out on fourth down with the hard count, back up two steps. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Defense has held their own the past two possessions. We got to give them some help. Gotta jump start this offense. Been moving, he's been throwing picks two of the last three possessions. This one over the middle, incomplete. I guess that was. That was Grant Nichols intended. Okay. That was right Way in Way off area. the mark. Yeah. He's, uh, Josh Powell's a little bit off, and earlier in the game, he took a nice hit on a scramble, landed on that throwing shoulder. I don't sense anything wrong, but maybe. Oh, for his last five with one pick now. He had started so well. This one, play action fake. Rolling right. He's just going to have to dump one out of bounds. Makes a valiant effort to come up with a catch. Joseph Edwards with Edwards. that snag. Going to be a gain of just about two to the 19. Yeah, you get scared whenever you're retreating 20 yards and throwing up a prayer. Yeah, he's like, I got a lot of pressure in his face. Number 10 coming off the end and really pushing the, the, the lineman back. Back to throw again. Good protection. Rolling right. Can't find anybody. Jump throws up the right sideline incomplete into a crowd. I'm glad that one went out of bounds. Could have been picked again. Yeah, it seems like we're not, or we're doing these designed rollouts or moving the pocket for Pell, but I think the Doughboys are going to be able to hold their own if Josh Pell can just stay in the pocket. We don't need to necessarily move it because they're getting good outside pressure. But apparently, I mean, with the time he's got to throw and not finding people open, either the coverage has yeah. been great or he's just not seeing people who are open. Either of those could be happening. It's easy to complete passes in seven on seven, but when it's live football, man, it, it gets a lot di more difficult. Fourth and seven from the 20, and they're going to punt it. Got it away. 10, 20, 30. Did it hit him? It hit him. That's our ball. Get, 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 get on it. Don't run along next to it. Oh, my. Did <laughs> we not get it? Yes. Yes, we did. <laughs> Don't well, run along next to the ball. I think Brad Cohn was about get to it. jump through this glass <laughs> to get down there if they it, didn't get the ball. Sometimes you want to scoop a score. <laughs> sometimes you just need to fall on that joint. It was a 40-yard punt. It was muffed. I think, Peter I don't Park know if it gets muffed. it I at about it the, the return it, man that was coming I back. I mean, it's technically block. called yeah. muffed. Right, so. right, right. 34-yard line, first and 10, 229 left in the half. So many fortuitous bounces tonight. We have to and make something happen. We have to make something happen here. Yeah, yeah. I take a shot on uh, first The down. football gods are, are not dumping on us or anything. We're getting plenty of chances. We're just not taking advantage take of it. Take it. Take it. 
Pell to throw. To the end Down zone. the right sideline in the air to Edwards, and it's picked off inside the box. And that's what I was just talking about. But do we have a flag down? We do. Yeah, it's going to be an offside. That was a great job by Pell and Woo. Isaac Barksdale, the center. Then it was the, worth the chance then. Absolutely. There's the signal. Offsides on the defense. God, so we'll Cody, scratch that third pick. Cody Marshall did a good job. That defensive back wasn't letting him get the outside, so he was just taking what the DB gave him. Got upfield. If that ball's kind of thrown towards the hash mark and not towards the sideline, that could have been a touchdown. So first and five now from about the 29. Tyree Nicholson in the backfield. He fakes to him, runs into the line. Pell yes. finds a hole, cuts to the right side. Guy suborns him after he gets the first down at about the 17-yard line. Excellent run by Pell. Great vision, pushing a blocker forward so he can pick up more yards. Love that. Yeah, great run. 16 on that one to get our 13th first down. Got 13 first downs and six points to show for it. Wow. Nine points. Shouldn't ever have twice as many first downs as points. Yeah, nine points. Pell takes the snap. Throwing, looking left side into the end zone towards Marshall, but Marshall's looking to his right, and it was over his left shoulder instead, incomplete. Yeah, that's got to be on Cody Marshall, knowing where the boundary is, knowing where the touchdown is. Just kind of having that idea where the quarterback's got to be able to throw you open. Look, I mean, it, especially with his footwork, it was nice to turn inside, uh, but he had so much field to work with. 150 on the clock, second and 10. 17 yard line. Three receivers right now, four. Molinaro goes over there. Flash and fake throws. Molinaro caught at the 15, 10, 5, dragging some guys to the five yard line. First and goal, 13 yards in the completion. Minute 42 left on the clock. Houston Molinaro adds another dimension to this offense that we so desperately need. He is that slot speed that can get loose. To the line. Into yeah. the end zone. Touchdown, Timberwolves. Tyree Nicholson, the ball carrier right there, and just did a great job. And who wants it more right there on the goal yep, line? Yep, that was one of those who wants it more plays. And That's Tyree, what we need more of. Tyree just did a great job of finishing that one into the end zone. And, I mean, started that possession at around 530. And so we've taken four minutes off that clock. That was a great possession. Not going to chase the two-point conversion yet. Kick team is on. Shoot, if you can keep up with your touchdowns now, then your field goal is going to be huge. Raylan Barr knocks it through. 129 left. New score, Maynard 20, Timberwolves 16. They're inching closer. We'll be right back after this. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football on Flow Sports TV, powered by the Vibe Live Network. Miles Kokenauer here along with Brad Cohn, Josh Willard, and Cecil Kokenauer. Dandra McBenn, you are our QA. Good job, Miles. <laughs> Bringing us back from the commercial break. Onside oh! kick, pushed through oh! to the right side. Cedar Park couldn't quite catch it for it went out at the 45. And again, at Timberwolf Night in America, we had that conversation with Coach and just how they can kick out of so many different formations in that base formation. Um, so right there, trying to catch them on a surprise kick, and that was the perfect distance, just a little bit too fast for that outside gunner to go track that thing down. Going so out. great field position for Maynard with not a lot of time. And Maynard still holding on to all three timeouts. Cedar Park got all three as well. Well, 
We burned one, I think. I thought we did. 15 yeah, yards, the kickoff went, but it's out of bounds, so a five-yard penalty, so they get it at the 50. Check, check. Check, check. Better? It sounds like better. A little more space. There we go. Here comes Nard Events and Joyner and the rest of the Mustang. Right at no man's land. Give to Joyner. Dances through some tackles in the backfield. What he was doing early, he's going to get nine yards all the way to the 41 before he stopped. Yeah, giving up nine yards on first down is never good, but coming into this game, uh, Joyner had, having 10.8 yards per carry. 14.7 right now in this game. You can see how he busted that average up with all the long touchdown run. Interesting formation here. Yep, stacked three receivers, one behind the other to the right, but they that's a distraction. They just <laughs> give to Joyner in the backfield, and he is taken down quickly. Looks like Murray. Also looks like uh, Brendan Payne in there. Yeah, they, they definitely got me fooled. I fall for the easy tricks like that. They had so much speed tr stacked up in, uh, in the trips formation on the right side, and they just went left. So uh, I definitely took the bait on the pre snap 44 seconds on a ticking clock left before halftime, and a timeout is called by the Timberwolves. We keep here since we're about to have about a 28-minute break anyway. That's right. And this has been a really exciting game. We knew that Maynard was going to give us their best shot. And so far, Cedar Park, if you think that they've kind of weathered the storm to get to this point only trailing by four points with everything that's gone on, uh, you know, I, I think that Cedar Park is making the right adjustments on the defensive side of the ball. The last two possessions uh, for Maynard only went three plays and then a punt and then four plays and a punt. So Cedar Park has got it figured out. We just got to capitalize. And, again, I mean, when we're – when they're losing yards on first down, that is such a big opportunity. You know, they, they've got those two 70-plus touchdown runs by Joyner. That's 149 of their total 273 yards of offense on the two touchdowns. Unbelievable. So this game right now is being staked on those two runs by Maynard. They'd be behind if those were just no gain like we saw that they both should have been. Right. Again, we wanted to give a shout-out Brady Elford. Uh, Cedar Park junior linebacker who's been out last game and this game. He's actually hanging out over at Dell Children's Hospital right now as he's going through some serious issues. And just want to give a shout-out to Brady. You're definitely missed tonight. We could use some of that hard hitting and tackling. Sure could. Second down, about 14. Zardovets pitches to his oh. running back. Had a shot at him oh, in the backfield. He's going to get free and go for big yardage. Hey, fumble! The fumble! One and fumble, fumble! The ball. 15 picks it, Cedar Park he picked it up. They're marking him down? They're marking him down. Oh, oh that was a very hesitant call by that official. Hmm. Man, oh. number nine, Dylan Hufford, did a great job coming up and playing that at the line of scrimmage, but he, Joyner just ran through that tackle with ease. Looked like he got more than the 21 he got, but that was enough. He ran through probably eight tackles yeah. in that run, Josh. Yeah. It's not not good. And I don't know what the stoppage of play is for. I don't either. But I think I can agree that he was down because I saw him go down on my binoculars yeah. and drop my binoculars. There wasn't any fumble yet. It looked like a Kyler Murray and the Green Bay Packers at the very end of the oh, game. Oh, they called it us. Oh, they my called gosh. it us. No, I think they called timeout, man. Don't I think do that's that what to that me, was. Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm man, I saw them motion, and then our guys started jumping up. Huh. I saw the head referee do the timeout signal and point towards Maine. Okay. But still, 32 seconds left. So Cedar Park, if we're still on defense Gotta right here, which I stop. think we are, keep everything in front. Sorry, guys. That's all right. Oh, my bad. You got my juices I, uh, going. I applaud your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> Not like neither of us have ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 32 seconds left. Maynard's burned one of its timeouts. It is. Oh, they got the sticks going the wrong way. They're well, they, messing with me. They haven't reset them yet, I think. Okay, there we go. Yeah, see, they don't reset them until right before play starts. I always thought that was inefficient. but We've got to take out the run. they got to beat us by going through the air. Yeah, because Zardovet's only a 44% passer. But barely throw more touchdowns and picks this year. He's rolling right. Going to run the 20. 10 out of bounds. Another first down. Might be first and goal. 
A good 14 yards on the run. A good job, too, by getting out of bounds, stopping the clock. They're still holding on to all three timeouts and only five seconds off the clock on that play. Can't be. They just called one. Oh, okay. They admit the scoreboard may not be right. Yeah, they're, they're not helping me out with my down, <laughs> my down, my, where the ball's at. First, and they're going to say goal right at the 10 on the right hash mark. We have seen amazing goal line stands from this Black Rain this year. We they need to channel another. They have done that often, yes. Let's, let's dial up another one. Snap. Charter Vets to throw. Hit as he throws. There's a flag. Towards the right side, there's a flag. Where's Big hit on the quarterback, too. I hope it's not rough. Offsides. It's offsides. Ah, 20 seconds on the clock. Looks like it's going to be offsides on the defense. But they'll decline that since the pass took it down to the three. Touchdown, Mustang. That was a touchdown. That was a touchdown. Oh, that was a touchdown. Excuse me. And Quentin Joyner was the receiver. Is that number eight? Yep. Yep. Her Man. First catch of the night. I mean, that's super unfortunate, and I think that on, fake onside kick now might come back to bite us in the butt. I mean, getting the ball right at 50-yard line with 30 seconds left, uh, you got to take field position on that. Yeah, I would think. On Wisconsin is the fight song for Maynard. Oh, that oh so kick close. Almost blocked it, but they shoved it through. 20 seconds left in the half. New score, 27-16 Maynard. We'll just keep it here. Well, we received the ball with only about 50 seconds against Georgetown and found a way to come out with that victory. I mean, it's still a whole half of football left, <laughs> and, and it's only a two-possession two game. Yeah. The, the Black Rain has figured a, figured a few things out. Special teams is uh, getting a job done, so we're not out of this yet. And it's going to be interesting. I mean, going into the locker room, got 28 minutes to think about it because the Black Rain is going to have to come back out and put together a nice stop. 27-16, our score it feels closer than that. Should be closer than that. We have really failed to take advantage of a, a lot of things the football gods have thrown our way in this game. Have not capitalized. So the Timberwolves back to take this kick. All of them so far, four of them have been taken by Houston Molinaro. He's averaging 20.3 tonight. Four kicks for 81 net yards of return. We did flip. I don't know. This is the same formation as last time. Hendrickson losing to Pflugerville 10 to 0 at half. Marshall to our right side. Molinaro on the left. Kick is coming down to Molinaro, who's muffing it and falls it on it at the 15. Oh. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like it's going to be our night. Flag on their side. That's interesting. It's back there like an offsides. Right. Oh, yeah, let's make him kick that again. I would definitely elect to re-kick. Our only shot at something here is a great return with 17 seconds left. So what's the call, White Hat? Where's he at? He's there he down is. there at about the 25. I got him. All sides, okay, yeah, let's take that again. Yep, and they have their return team out there. And I think Molinaro won't flub this one. That was a line drive kick. A nice squibber. Basically that. Well, back him up five, please. Let's see. <laughs> Molinaro will see his speed here, see if he can get to the end zone with this before it ticks to zero. Uh, he was marking it it's at the spot. On, there's an X on the field. <laughs> and then taking it back. <laughs> yeah. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. I did have some of those other scores pulled up. McNeil. So Hendrickson's losing by 10. 10 to 0 at half. McNeil okay. and Westwood tied 28 28 just before half. Vista Ridge up on Stony Point 31 to 7. Uh, Connolly down 13 to 7 against Elgin. Round Rock on top of Vandy 21 to 7 at half. Mm. Ooh. That's interesting. I, we played both of those. I think Vandy oh. just clearly looked like a better team. We should have beaten Round Rock. That's one of the games we should not have lost. Hutto on top of. Um, Cedar Ridge at halftime. So another line drive kick, and it's going to go out of bounds. Oh! Oh! What? Oh, it oh, went touchback. inside the <laughs> darn. <laughs> it looked like it was. Inside the pylon, so a touchback. I take, I take a knee and go into half. Yeah, I do too. I don't trust good things to happen. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> 
Let's just take it in, think about it. Only trailing by 11. Definitely not out of this ball game by the way the Black Rain has started to play. In a few minutes when the half ends, we'll quickly go to a commercial break for just a few minutes and come back and introduce the visiting band, which is us on the road. We will play first. Hey. Three-time hey. defending state champion band. They did it again. What? Dude, that's crazy. The Cedar Park band oh, won right, state right, again. Right, it's three times now. So, and it's every other year, so it's really like six years. Yeah, <laughs> it's like six years that nobody else has won it. <laughs> but they're not going to take a knee. Oh, my gosh. Take and a delay. flag, take a delay. But did the clock even start? No, because it doesn't start till the snap after oh, the yeah. kick. Yeah, you're right. But the play clock sure. starts, yeah, when yeah. they set the ball. Play clock has started again. So first and 15 from the 20. Wideouts to either side. Adams in the backfield with Pell. Well, give it to Kevin Adams. They're giving so much room. So give him some yardage, yeah. And that's Kevin. Runs to the left side of the line. A good gainer out to the 20. It's a gain of 10 for Kevin. The clock drips down 7, 6, 5. That'll probably be it. And that, and that is it. We are at halftime, trailing Maynard in the runner-up game for 11-5A, 27-16. We're going to go away for a few minutes, let you hear about some of our sponsors, and when we come back, we'll introduce the once-and-future state champion band. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, Terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. Army Ant Moving calls Cedar Park home for movers that residents and businesses can rely on for outstanding moving expertise and trustworthy estimates. Army Ant Moving stands above the rest. Their reputation speaks for itself. They've received the Angie's List Superior Service Award for the last two years. Their movers are highly trained and experienced. So whether you need to move your household to a new home across town or an entire corporate office to a new location, your valuables are in knowledgeable and reliable hands with Army Ant Moving Company. Check them out at armyantmoving.com. Interested in Vipe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Welcome back. It's the Halftime Show. Cedar Park trailing 27-16 here in the regular season finale to Maynard in Mustang Stadium on the road. And, you know, they did it again. Cecil, the band who has won five state titles in the last two in a row, did it again this week, won another state title. That's crazy, man. It's just uh, excellence. Excellence in action at the Cedar Park uh, High School all the way around. So we're going to step aside and let you watch and listen to the, the new and former state champions. The celebrity social officers of Lauren D. Domenico, Emma Friend, Annabelle Garcia, and Hayden Howard. The celebrity line officers of Junior Lieutenant Kylie Fernand, Junior Lieutenant Sandra Ziegler, Senior Lieutenant Ava Caldwell, Senior Lieutenant Lexi Hall, First Lieutenant Lindsay Lopez, and Celebrities Captain Katie Kim. The Celebrity Star of the Week is Sophie Trish. Tonight, the celebrities will perform their streamer jazz routine to shake it off.
the Celebrities Dance Team. This concludes our halftime activities. The celebrities are under the direction of Nikki Evans and Katie Thompson. The celeb celebrities would like to thank their corporate sponsors, Dale Children's, Dairy Queen, Bush's Chicken, and Two Team Nails and Spa. The celebrities would also like to thank Principal John Sloan, Assistant Principal Alan Stewart, and the entire Cedar Park High School administration for their continued support of the Cedar Park Dance Program. On behalf of the celebrities, we would like to congratulate the Timberwolves. All right, there you go. I just no more on my part. The state champs uh, are still out, having won that recently, and are not at the game. So we uh, had just the celebrities there. Gave you a good close-in shot of some of them. We're going to go to an extended break here. When we come back, we'll talk about the first half. Here's what they believe at Toyota of Cedar Park. They believe in fostering relationships that are built on trust and integrity. They believe their team deserves to work in a supportive, competitive family environment. They believe in respecting your time and intelligence, and that's why they offer an express purchase and express service. Lastly, they believe in sharing their passion with you. They're just south of New Hope Road on the southbound side of 183A. Find them online at toyotaofcedarpark.com. Shop Academy of Sports and Outdoors, back to school meant back to sports. And from graphic tees to football cleats, they have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com and you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans. All at a price you'll love. So if you want, a, if you want game changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or mungiarealestate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A. At Wafed Bank, formerly Washington Federal, working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafed Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposits over 32,000 ATMs, free checking, Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800-324-9375. In the battle for barbecue supremacy, warriors pit prime meats, secret sauces, and recipes against one another. Yet one champion stands alone. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, in the modern-day vernacular, where bad means good. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue has the worst barbecue in Texas. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Army Ant Moving calls Cedar Park home for movers that residents and businesses can rely on for outstanding moving expertise and trustworthy estimates. Army Ant Moving stands above the rest. Their reputation speaks for itself. They've received the Angie's List Superior Service Award for the last two years. Their movers are highly trained and experienced. So whether you need to move your household to a new home across town or an entire corporate office to a new location, your valuables are in knowledgeable and reliable hands with Army Ant Moving Company. Check them out at armyantmoving.com. 
You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one of a kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. At Wafed Bank, formerly Washington Federal, working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafed Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposits over 32,000 ATMs, free checking, Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800-324-9375. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages with creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single-family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or mungiarealestate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A. Experience the difference at Toyota of Cedar Park, one of the Austin area's newest automobile dealerships. Their new vehicle department will always stock the newest Toyota models you need. The pre-owned vehicles they choose must each pass a rigorous inspection and be in tip-top shape before they make it to their lot or website for you to see. And if you're looking for budget-friendly Toyota-certified used vehicles, they've got you covered. And you can rest easy knowing that the best new cars make the best used cars. That's Toyota of Cedar Park at Toyota of Cedar Park. Park.com. Army Ant Moving calls Cedar Park home for movers that residents and businesses can rely on for outstanding moving expertise and trustworthy estimates. Army Ant Moving stands above the rest. Their reputation speaks for itself. They've received the Angie's List Superior Service Award for the last two years. Their movers are highly trained and experienced. So whether you need to move your household to a new home across town or an entire corporate office to a new location, your valuables are in knowledgeable and reliable hands with Army Ant Moving Company. Check them out at armyantmoving.com. In the battle for barbecue supremacy, warriors pit prime meats, secret sauces, and recipes against one another. Yet one champion stands alone. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue in the modern-day vernacular, where bad means good. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue has the worst barbecue in Texas. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. At Wafed Bank, formerly Washington Federal, working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafed Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposits over 32000 ATMs, free checking, Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800-324-9375. 
Experience the difference at Toyota of Cedar Park, one of the Austin area's newest automobile dealerships. Their new vehicle department will always stock the newest Toyota models you need. The pre-owned vehicles they choose must each pass a rigorous inspection and be in tip-top shape before they make it to their lot or website for you to see. And if you're looking for budget-friendly Toyota certified used vehicles, they've got you covered. And you can rest easy knowing that the best new cars make the best used cars. That's Toyota of Cedar Park at toyotaofcedarpark.com. Welcome back. Cedar Park Football Flow Sports TV, powered by the Vipe Live Network. Brad Cohn here, along with Josh Willard and Cecil Coconauer, DeAndre McVenue, our QA. We are at halftime, about 13 and a half minutes left before the second half kickoff. We're down 27-16 to Maynard, and we're going to go over some of the numbers with you. First downs, a little surprising. Cedar Park 15, Maynard 10. Rushing, Cedar Park 19 for 91. Not a bad average, 4.79, almost five yards a carry. They're at 18 for 213. But again, you take 149 and two out of that, they're at what, 16 for about 60-something. But you don't get to take those out of there. Pellis, 13 for 27 through the air, a touchdown, two picks, 168 yards, 48.15 completion percentage. If this percentage doesn't rise, this would be, uh, oddly, the third consecutive game that he has not been over 50% completions. Yards per attempt, kind of low, too, because of that 6.22. Mayner, 6 for 10, one pick, 105 yards, 60% completion, 10.5 yards per attempt. Total offense, 259 for Cedar Park, 3.8 for Maynard. We're on pace for a little over 500 yards. They're on pace for almost 640. Score by quarters, Maynard in the first 14-6, in the second 13-10. If we look at their offensive numbers, Quentin Joyner, close your ears if you're sensitive. 13 carries for 179 yards, a 13-point average, touchdowns of 72 and 77. So that's 149 out of 79. So only 30 yards on his other 11 carries, about three yards, under three yards a carry. Chain Obuko, a carry for minus one. Quarterback Zardovets, three carries for 10. Only one of them gained yardage, though. And Marvin Bibbs, one carry for 25, and it was a touchdown on an end around. Zardovets has all the passing yards, six for 10, one pick, 105. Uh, 10-yard touchdown on his last throw of the half to Quentin Joyner. Receiving, number one, Che Nobuko. How about this? One catch, 17 yards. It was wow. very early. Uh, four, Ike Essenwune, who's listed as a linebacker, but he's got two catches for 34 yards. Leading receiver catch-wise, leading receiver yardage-wise, is number 12, Marvin Bibbs, who had the touchdown run. He's also got a catch for 45 yards in the play before that. Uh, and then Isaiah Crosby, a catch for minus one. Murray blew him up in the backfield. And then Joyner, one catch for 10 yards. It was a touchdown near the end of the half. Look at our numbers. Kevin Adams, after a career night last week, 183 yards. He's got 10 carries for 20 yards. And he's not blocking for him tonight. Pell's got six for 65. Most of those ad libs. Nicholson, three for six and a four-yard touchdown. That's it for us on the ground. Not much through the air either. 13 for 27, two picks for Josh, 168 yards. Touchdown strike of eight yards to Houston Molinaro, who has two catches for 21 yards. Edwards, two for six. Carter Wohl, one for seven. Grant Nichols, three for 21. Weapon X, Cody Marshall, numero uno, five for 113, a 22.6 average. And those are your numbers. I mean, it's definitely not where we want to be right now, and offensively, those are just not the statistical numbers that we're needing, and missing Nick Gurry on tonight is definitely being affected because I feel like Cody Marshall would have more chances to get open um, because I feel like now they're going to start trying to lock in on Cody Marshall and taking him out of the game. So. And speaking of missing, maybe Brady, uh, Brady Elford would oh. have had two tackles on those 70-plus oh touchdown runs. I mean, Brady Elford's know. presence is definitely missed on this defense in the black rain, but that's the, the great thing about the Cedar Park team and community. It's it's got to be a next man up mentality, and people have to find it in themselves to step up and make plays. And I'm wondering who's going to be that guy on the defensive side of the ball. I really want it to be Jake McAnally, number 31, to just kind of take over and kind of channel sure. some of that black rain energy from that last season that really came on the scene as a strong junior linebacker. And this season has kind of, you know, had some issues, and especially wrapping up. So I, I really need Jake McAnally to step up. Big Murr is doing a good job throwing people around at the line of scrimmage. Our linebackers have just got to clean up. 
Now, don't forget Timberwolf Night in America, Tuesday night, November 9th, when Josh and I will host David Bowman and the trainers live from Santa Catarina Mexican Restaurant on Cypress Creek Road. When I say it that way, it really does sound like a band. (laughs) 7.30 to 9, next week's guest will be the state champion women's basketball team. After that, the cheer captain. And we do have some special guests up in the booth. You heard from Miles Kokenauer earlier with that intro. And then we also do have graduating class of 2012, 13, 2012, 2012 Cody Wilson, who was on the athletic training uh, squad. And Cody was definitely a vital part in all of our runs back in the day and definitely one of the guys. Now I keep up with this, and here's the full total of all our broadcasts of every Cedar Park Athletics event they have ever produced. 276 baseball games. I did all of those, but about five or six between 2008 and now. 225 women's basketball games from 2010 to now. Most of those by Mike Rose. 69 men's basketball games 2010 through 2012. Snoop Daniel was the voice of the men's Timberwolves for those. 173 football games, mostly 2008 through tonight in 2021, counting tonight excluding 2013, 116 broadcasts of Timberwolf Night in America for a grand total of 859. So depending on playoff runs for football, women's basketball, and baseball, we got a shot at producing our 900 Cedar Park sports broadcast late in the baseball season. Now, here's the playoff situation. We had some people asking, well, they're not sure. They thought there was still a scenario where we'd go out. There was, but one of the requirements for that to come true, for us to be out, was for uh, Georgetown to beat Weiss last night. That didn't happen. So us being out is off the table. We're in. Weiss is the champion. They're the number one seed. Maynard is in and would be the number two seed if they can hold this margin over Cedar Park. If we come back and beat Maynard, we are the two seed and will host a first-round playoff game, and Maynard gets the three seed. With Georgetown's loss to Weiss, they are four and three and can finish no lower than a tie for fourth with Hendrickson. If the Hawks beat Pflugerville tonight and we win, if that tie happens, Georgetown owns a tiebreaker with them. And so now no matter what they do with Pflugerville tonight, Hendrickson is out. The four playoff teams from 11-5A are settled. Y Cedar Park, Maynard, and Georgetown. And the only thing to settle out with tonight's results are the order of finish with a win by the Timberwolves tonight. It's Weiss, Cedar Park, Maynard, then Georgetown. With a loss to the Mustangs and a Hendrickson loss to Pflugerville, it's Weiss, Maynard, Cedar Park, Georgetown. If Hendrickson beats the Panthers tonight, there's a resultant three-way tie for third and fourth. And the Hawks are still the ones left out. But Georgetown slips into the three seed around us, and Cedar Park falls to fourth. In that case, we would draw the toughest playoff assignment at Dripping Spring. So let's not let it get there. Let's win this game tonight. Where Cedar Park and Maynard are playing for second and the right to host a first-round playoff game rather than travel to one. The way that that three-way tie, uh, if Hendrickson wins tonight, they're behind, and we lose tonight, us, Georgetown, Hendrickson all finish four and three for the two spots, third and four. So one of them has to be left out. The way they do that, Coach Key was telling me, there's a three-way point differential system. What they do is they take the point differential of each team versus those other two that they're tied with, and the lowest one is left out. Georgetown is plus 12, We're minus one. Hendrickson's minus 12. So Hendrickson would be left out of that tie. I mean, you've got to have your heart broken if you're Hendrickson. (laughs) Yeah. 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 All right, looking at the playoff teams and their standings at this moment from the opposing bracket from District 12-5A, I've got the wrong ones that I was talking to you about the other night. 12-5A actually is the Dripping Springs lead. They're on top at 6-0, and they will finish that way. They're playing... um, I think it's Harlandale tonight uh, who's out of the money at 1-5. and five. They'll win and take the district outright. Buta Johnson's 5-1. and one. They're playing uh, somebody that's out of the money, too. They'll finish second. Seguin's 5-1. and one. Uh, They will probably stay there. Veterans Memorial, who we beat in the first round last year, 4-3. and three. It doesn't really look plausible based on who everybody's playing tonight between these teams that there will be any movement from this order. Dripping Springs, Buta Johnson. Seguin Veterans Memorial. So if we win tonight, we would host Seguin probably next Friday night, but it could be Thursday or Saturday. I think it's a 90% chance it's Friday night. Uh, If we lose, we could slip to fourth, and that would be going to Dripping Springs. If we stay at third, we'd be going to Hayes to play Buta Johnson. 
Mm. So that's kind of how that's going to sift out. But we need to take business here, take care of business here, so we can get a home playoff game next week because we need to get that one and win it so that we do not end up with our first losing home record since 2005. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you put that on the line. we got to come through. I mean, and protecting the gup is something that we're really proud of. Um, and some other scores, again, third quarter just getting kicked underway between Hendrickson and Pflugerville. Scores still 10-0 to in Pflugerville's favor. Um, let's see, Stony Point, they're still 31-7 at half. Vandergriff, they started in the third quarter. They're still trailing 21-7 to to Round Rock. Absolutely insane. And Brenham on top of Rouse right now, 17-7 oh. to halfway through the third. Boy, I'm pulling for Josh Mann and the Rouseketeers there, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but, now, oh, a big score change here. Cedar Ridge now taking the lead over Hutto, 21-16 to with 7.25 in the third. I'm a little surprised that one's as close as it is. Hutto has struggled most of the year. Cedar Ridge is pretty darn good. Yeah, they've had they've had their issues for sure. Johnson, uh, the Johnson Jaguars, is that Buta Johnson? Yep. So they're on top of Canyon, 17-7 to at half. And oh, my gosh, Liberty Hill over North Northeast Early College. Is that's that Reagan. Reagan? Okay. That's Reagan. That's Reagan for all you people out there. <laughs> um, and they're up 45-0 to zero at half. Oh, my goodness. And then, uh, oh, here's a good one. Wimberley over Austin Achieve. The Polar Bears, the 45-0. to zero. Oh, no, excuse me, 60-0. to zero. Is that halftime, That's too? a halftime score. And probably the biggest game around the area is going to be Lake Travis and Westlake. Halftime, 42-14 to 14 Westlake. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Drain the lake. I'm not sure <laughs> that the UIL has done a good thing by letting these charter schools play football in UIL districts. Yeah. You know, they're, they're very small enrollment schools, usually sometimes one or 200, and this team is playing in a 4A district, playing schools that got over 1,000 kids. There's absolutely no way they can compete. Absolutely. Go to them all, and out of the first 100 Male teenagers you see make a football team. Then have your buddy go to another mall, and out of the first five or six hundred male teenagers he sees make a football team. Who's going to have the better team? Right. You know, it's just the statistical weight of the numbers. Right. And so another good score from our District 11 5A, Anderson and Leander, all tied up halfway through the third, 28-28. That's the battle of the cellar. That's right. Battle of the basement. <laughs> See who gets to lock the cellar door. And then we've got some other scores. Coach Ross fell uh, last night in a very close game, Lucas Lovejoy. Oh. Um, and that was sad just because uh, Coach Ross, they were number two in the state right now. And going to pull up these other scores. Lucas Lovejoy lost 27 to 24 last night. And right now, Mount Vernon Bulldogs on top, 56 to 6 at halftime. I think both of those had already clinched the district title last oh, yeah. week, right? Mm hmm. So I think they had a little titleitis maybe for Chris Ross's team. They, ah, we got it. Yeah, and then Coach Willis right now, they're struggling just before half, 15 seconds before halftime, 21 to 9, losing to the Skeet Skeeters. The Mesquite Skeeters, team that we beat when they were the defending state champs in old Texas Stadium with the hole in the roof in the third round of the playoffs in 2004. Uh, it was our best playoff win uh, in a long time until probably the 2012 season. A lot of good scores around the area, but we've got to focus on this one right now, and it's going to be on the black rain to come out and set the tone. It is. Cedar Park is out. They're ready to play. Here comes Maynard. Man, that's such a small roster. It looks like we're looking at a 3A schools team down there. There's some big athletic guys. There's just not a lot of guys to spell anybody when they get tired or get injured. Very, very small lineup. You know, we look at our lineup. we got 62 players. They have 44. 18 fewer players. I gave you the demographic makeup class-wise for them, where the vast uh, majority of their players are underclass, and they're going to be good next year. For us, we got 62 players, 42 of them are seniors. Oh, my gosh. Only 12 juniors and 8 sophomores, no freshmen. We've got to get kids in the pipeline. we got to get kids inspired. Indeed. And that, and that was the best part about growing up in the Cedar Park community in those early, you know, great teams for Cedar Park with Corey Washington, Rupert Edwards in that 04, 05 season. And then yeah. when Ross came over, I mean, it was just a championship mentality from top to bottom in the community. When you see your varsity team out there taking names and kicking butt, I mean, it's easy to get inspired and want to sign up for football. And so I know getting back on a winning tradition um, is definitely going to keep those kids staying in it. Middle school players almost to a man come to every Friday night game just 
seeing themselves in that Timberwolf uniform a couple of seasons down the road. And so the Norwegian Nightmare sets it up to kick off. We'll be defending the north goal in the third quarter and we'll be headed north. That's into the wind in the fourth. Last three possessions for the Mustangs ended in punt, punt, and then a touchdown with 30 seconds left on the clock. So Cedar Park has figured it out, but when they go to that two-minute offense, it kind of gets thrown out the window. So Cedar Park's got to get grounded and play some good defense. Well, we had two interceptions in our last three possessions. This kick high and deep, caught Ooh. at the three. <laughs> I fell. guess he fell down to his knee, but they didn't see that. He's going to get around to the 10, the 13, maybe the 12. Pretty good coverage by the uh, Cedar Park headhunters. Only a 10-yard return. Yeah, he ran about 50 yards, but it only got about two yards or about 10 yards gained. So great job by that coverage team. And again, those outside gunners sticking to their assignment, not following the football and pushing down the field, creating that wall. It just gives those ball carriers and you know those speedsters nowhere to go. And that's where Houston Molinaro doesn't go sideways. He goes north and south. I love it. They've got three returns and only 20 yards, just a 6.7 average on kickoff returns for Mayors. There's something we're doing right. On the seven, on the 12. On the 12. Well, there looks like some confusion in the backfield. They may have to burn a timeout already. Wow. That's good news. Down to only two timeouts. We haven't even run a play in the third quarter. We'll stay here. So not sure what was going on there, if they had the wrong package in for the play they called or they didn't like something they saw in the Cedar Park defense. And it could very well be that. How many times have we talked about our defensive coordinator, Brent Britton, being one of the best we have ever seen at making a halftime adjustment? And I think that just comes from the trust from the players and just, you know, in having those smart IQ players on, on both sides of the ball. But the defense, the Black Rain's ability to kind of change schemes, you know, halfway through a game is – something that's been going on for uh, the past decade here in Cedar Park. And so Coach Britton, hopefully he's got a few tricks up his sleeve. We've got George Wheeler checked in at cornerback on the other side. All right, so here we go. Maynard's back out there. Cedar Park's back out there. From the 12, uh, left hash. Sardovitz and Joyner in the backfield. Fakes to Joyner, pitches to the outside, turns the corner, is going to have a good run. Uh, easily have the first down out of bounds past the 30. Are they going to mark him right at the 30? That was Nabuku. And that was a great job play designed by Maynard right there. They just ran the read option into the into the line and then had the speed option motion going around back, and Chain Nabuku has that breakaway speed to get to the edge and did a great job right there. Well, we can't give up 18 yards of play and win this game. A little more confusion in the backfield now. Nabucco is lining up back there behind Joyner. Same thing, other Same side. Same play this side. Triple option fake pitch the outside of Nabucco with that speed. And another big gainer. And another Cross flag, too. Oh, my Good gosh. deal. Cecil says holder black in the back. That's good because that was a 25-yard gain. Again to Nabucco. Maynard thinks Cecil might be right. They're backing up. No wonder he got around that left corner so easily. Again, when playing these teams that have speed, we've got to keep outside contained. They're running this option a lot. And that is the call to hold on the offense. Let me log Line. that one in. And another hold. Oh, one, they, there's two, and they took the one that occurred farther back. Ah, very smart. That's why I don't get paid the big bucks. <laughs> Is that why? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that'll move it back to the 20. How many times have we said this, though? Starting on first down, they're starting way behind the first down stick. We've got to capitalize. Yeah, first and 20, we got to do something with this. Again, oh, same play. Oh. Almost picked off the pitch for a touchdown. Instead, another big gainer for Nobuko. More flags Start flying past in. Past the 30 more flags. Well, they need to work on that play a little better. He gets 12 to the 32. Let's see what the flags are about. And that was, again, that speed option play. They've run that three times in a row now. We almost picked off the pitch for a 10-yard touchdown and, return. And, and that was just so close. And Michael Putney almost got home with that. But, again, you got to fight for that outside contain. You can't let him get the edge as, as close as he was to picking that off. It's just a, it's a gamble when they got speed. Another holding call. Oh, what do you know? Gosh. 
And that'll be a 10-yarder. See where that one occurred and see the net on the penalty. Line of scrimmage was the 20. They haven't moved it back yet. They wave it off? What happened? They didn't change the down marker. It must have happened up at the 30. And so, the, so it's a zero-yard penalty. They just get the down over again. Oh, that's There's motion all over the start. line, yeah. And the guy's wide open up the left sideline complete for the calls? first down. Uh, that's the second time we've seen all sorts of motion that looked like before the, the snap and no flags call. That looked like the tackle stood up and started locating some pressure. Like I was I didn't think I didn't even think the offensive linemen were set. 21 yards on that gain and another first down. I'm telling you, man, the big play is killing us. Yeah, it really is. It's been true all year long. That one complete to Marvin Bibbs again. Turn. Gives, it. gives to the running back joiner. Big hole up the middle. He gets 14 yards across midfield, R45, and a first down. And again, we had that opportunity first and 20 in two big plays. Bam, bam. They're already in Cedar Park territory. So field's getting shorter. Black Rain's got to step up. Well, on the ground, not even counting the ones that got pulled back, they're still averaging 16 yards a carry in the oh second half. My gosh. <laughs> we have definitely got some defensive issues. Mm. First and 10 at the Cedar Park 45. Gives Joyner again through the middle. This time the guys kind of collapse on him and limit him to two. Second and eight. Good job staying at home. Those defensive linemen did a good job. Brendan Payne, Murray Robinson, and Ian Ferguson just throwing those offensive linemen into the running back per se and causing chaos there at the line of scrimmage. Right in front of us down there at the 43-yard line of Cedar Park, second and eight. All the receivers are on the right side. Nice snap. Snaps high. Joyner takes it, and he's running to the right oh. side, and we miss a tackle, and he turns the corner. Gets big yards. Yeah, Another flag, flag is down at the 30, which is a little bit beyond where Joyner got. He got about nine yards, enough for the first, but let's see what happens. I feel like that one might be on us. Joyner's calling for the trainer. Oh, that's interesting. He was a little slow to get up on that last play, and then right there with that surprise snap, I mean, everybody yeah. stopped to look at Joyner catch that football. He's on his own steam, a little he's hitch off. in his get-along. So he's going to head off. He'll be back. Referee's talking over the flag now. Let's see what we got. Holding. Holding. On who? <laughs> he didn't say who it's on. Well, th that's a good job, buddy. <laughs> he just said holding. <laughs> But they moved the ball back 10 yards from where he ended up, so the hole was right where he ended up, a which means of, it's a negative one-yard penalty. <laughs> Bader's getting kind of frustrated down there. See some of the teammates having to pull players away from talking to the, to the refs. Here's the bad luck we got. We get a hold on them, and they gain a yard on it. This was a pitch option left side, and once again, we can't get any contain. Obuko. Big yardage, and he gets down to about the 22 for another first down. Angles, angles, angles. Luke Kaharski had the angle, and when you're going against speed, you've got you to take down. away the outside. You cannot go directly at him because as soon as you get there, he's already yeah. three steps gone. 23 yards on that one. Cedar Park, if they want to not travel for the playoffs and avoid a home losing record for the first time in 16 years, Needs to keep them off the scoreboard here because a touchdown here will pretty much ruin your evening. So far, the 10th play of this drive. Same formation, high snap again. Zaravets throws down the right side into the end zone. Incomplete. Oh. Almost a great catch over there. Wheeler on the coverage was intended for uh, Ike Esonwune. That was a good play call, though, by Maynard, and they've been lulling us to sleep with that joiner into the line and then the speed option to the outside, and this time going towards the air. They had the one-on-one -on -one matchup that they liked, but a little bit behind, I thought the receiver was going to be able to flip his hips and come down with it, but just incomplete. We'll take it. Only the 12th throw of the night for Maynard. They've completed seven of them. Wow. Mabuko stays in the backfield kind of as a tailback in a shotgun eye formation. 
He is behind, and there goes quarterback on the right side. He almost lost the ball. Yeah, he was here. carrying that ball way out <laughs> here outside. He had it That's dangerous. against his right hip for a moment. He gets to the 20 for a gain of two. All right, boys, third down, third and eight. I mean, this is kind of a no man's land. I don't know the leg that the kicker has. Number 45 is standing right next to the coaches, so I'd like to think that this is in his range, but holding to a field goal, that keeps us in it for sure. Yeah, they about 37 from here. Lined up pretty much between the hash marks. Tackle, tackle, tackle. Of course, they're not thinking that. They're thinking touchdown. Third and eight. Again, we got them right where they want us. Back to throw. Zardovich. The throw has a man. Oh, oh. Yeah, that would have been a oh, touchdown, oh, oh. and he dropped the ball. Talk about well, lucky. sometimes was, you'd rather be lucky than good. He was wide open over there with a huge lane of green right into the right into the end zone for him. Very fortunate he drops that ball. All right. Well, we've likely kept them out of the end zone. Now let's try to just keep them off the scoreboard completely. Do not give up eight yards. Messing up this field goal attempt, but they're going to go for it. Yeah, I don't know that i do that here. I, Make this a three-score game is what I would do. We've shown slow ability to score. They are rolling left, throwing towards the end zone, into coverage. Did he, got, he catch it he or was that. it knocked away? What oh, a catch. Got that. What a catch. Is that Wabuka? Yep. Well, no wonder he's going to play college football. From the 20 down to about the, looks like the four, 16 yards in the first and goal. Is there a flag? Or are they going to get Nabuka for it. taunting, maybe? Uh, maybe. Maybe. He's down there jawing like crazy. No, they're not. I mean, I think because this helmet fell off during the play. He, yeah, yeah, he does have to come out for that. Well, I, I thought they were going to get him. It was He was just doing the referees. He right. made a catch symbol, you know. But, again, second, fourth down converted for the Maynard Mustangs. Uh, how many times have we had him on third and long tonight? And they end up on a touchdown drive anyway. So first and goal from about the four. A throw into the right corner of the end zone. A fade is left short, but he fights for it and makes the catch for the touchdown. That was Micah Collins, the tight end, number 19. I want to say that, yeah, that was George Wheeler in coverage. And our, our DBs, they need to start thinking receiver-like. They need to think that they can go get the football, too. Yeah, you it's my to, ball, when too. When you see yeah. that receiver get those big eyes, you've got to turn your head around and locate that football. I mean, that first possession, though, it almost took half the time off of the clock in the third quarter. 14 plays. 7.51 on the clock in the third. Point coming. High snap. Kicks good. But they made up for it with a good play by their holder. 7.51 left in the third. The lead now 18 for Maynard, 34 16. We need them to follow the Texas Longhorns playbook from here on out. All the 18-point second-half leads that they have blown. We'll be right back in a minute. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiations. All right, sorry to cut that one off. Just one of those things. Maynard to kick off now. Cedar Park down 18. Need two touchdowns, a field goal, an extra point kick, and a two-point play just to tie. On the ground, uh -oh. hits one of our guys at the 25, and they're just trying to fall on it. It's still loose. But Cedar Park gets it at the 21. Yeah, Grant Nichols, man, uh, that up back, is that was rolling past him. He should have just let that just go. Let it go, yeah. And, uh, let it's going to go out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, it probably would have taken a nice bounce and gone out of bounds. So we dodged a bullet right there. All right, so Pell and company have a heck of a job to do. And Pell started, he was uh, 11 of 18 and now 13 for 27, a string of incompletions that we've got to start connecting on some quick three-step game and just distributing the football. He's two of his last nine for 15 yards and a pick. 
Pell takes the snap, gives off Gavin to Gavin Mundell. Two yards for Mundell, second and eight. Haven't seen much Kevin Adams that now. It's the first offensive play of the second half for Cedar Park. Quickly, slant pass, complete left side, out to about the 30 for nine yards. Who was that? That was 18, Carter Wall. Carter Wall. A great job. That was a perfectly placed football by Pell in stride going forward. One for one in the second half. This time up the middle. Good for the first down. Gained about five. There we go, moving the sticks, getting some momentum going for this offense and those Doughboys getting that tough earned first down. That was Mundell again, 16th first down of the game for Cedar Park. Pell over the middle has a man open. Is that Nichols? It is. Grant Nichols trying to outstrip. <laughs> Looked like he was getting a cramp about the last 15 yards. He's down to the five-yard line. Definitely his longest catch of the career and a timely one, but that was all set up by the play action. Josh Pell did a great job running that mesh into the line of scrimmage and just going over the top, baby. 65 yards on that one. Oh. This one into the line with the running back. He's not going to get anything. Was that Mundell again? Yeah. Gavin Mundell does a spin move about two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Thankfully, he does to get back to the line. Second and goal. Again with Mundell. Again with nothing. Yeah, Pell would have scored if he just pulled the ball, it looked like. It's not going to be between the tackles. It, it well, gotta, it shouldn't be. You've got to be attacking the outside, stretching yeah. this defense out. We don't get the kind of blocking we need to go between tackles down here in short yards. Uh, Pell back to throw, looking, rolling right side. Tucking away, he's heading for the corner of the end zone, and he finds it. Josh Pell with some really smart, good run in there for the five-yard touchdown, and we're not dead yet. My goodness, Josh Pell looking like he's navigating, going from downtown Austin to Cedar Park on 35, just weaving through traffic right there. Did a great job finishing this drive into the end zone. That's what we need. Good job for the Cedar Park offense. First possession, first touchdown in the second half. And now they'll, yeah, not chasing the two quite yet. Reeling Barr. Out of the hold of Cody Marshall. Got to narrow this gap to 11. Sure. Snaps high. Marshall did it, though, and Raylan Barr with a kick up and through. We are sitting at 5.52 for the end of the third quarter. Margin now just 11, 34, 23. We'll be right back. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or mungiarealestate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A. All right, Nigerian Nightmare. Ben Gazer to kick. Norwegian, yeah, yeah, in the wrong continent. Ball uh, hits down and rolls out of bounds inside the five. Doubt they'll make him kick it again. They haven't been returning very well. They'll just take the ball, some advanced placement. Again, one of the things we've done well tonight, looking at their kick returns, have been three of them, 13, 10, and minus three yards. Other kickoffs not returned. Make a couple big plays right here, and Cedar Park is definitely back in this thing. Got to hold strong, and again, first and second down is not the issue. It's third and fourth when they're going to the air, and we have to cover and stick with our man for a while. All right, Zardovitz is not out there. Got Joiner in the Wildcat. 
He takes it, runs right side, and is hit about the line. See where they mark it. At most, he's got a yard. He might not even have that much. That was a good job by George Wheeler from that cornerback position, fighting off the block and meeting Joyner right at the line of scrimmage. And George Wheeler gave him everything he got, and I think he bounced off harder. Um, Joyner's just a big guy. <laughs> he's a, a big guy made to bring out of down. bricks. Yeah, no gain on the play. Good job by George. So still at the 30, second and 10, right hash. So is, is is this just a new tactic or is Zardovitz hurt or what? Because we still got Joyner in the Wildcat. Zardovitz is right on the sideline, doesn't seem to be injured. Okay, there's something different they're trying. Snap, runs right up the middle, missed tackle. Stutter steps, missed tackle, pushes three guys forward, pushes four guys forward, drags five guys forward. Holy moly, 17 yards, it should have been almost nothing. 18th yeah, first down of the game for them. They tied us now in that category. These big gashers on the ground is, is really starting to hurt us and pay dividends for the Mustangs. Sardovitz back in the game. Cecil spotted that. Oh, Luke, yeah. Luke Kaharski. Kaharski kind of sits down at the 43. Got to be a cramp. Reaching for his right calf, right shin area. Hopefully that is a calf. Stephanie Austin and another trainer come out to look at him. It's David Bowman. And Bowman, maybe Stephanie Austin, on the show with us Tuesday night. He gets up and kind of limps off, so I think Cecil's probably right, kind of a calf, it looks like. A little cramp in that calf. Five, 16 left in the third, so 17 and a quarter minutes left in the game. And they're running the clock now, 5-14 and taking Down 11. If they could get another stop and another touchdown drive, we're right in this thing. Or a pick six or a scoop and score by the Black Rain. We'll take that too. We'll throw any of that back. First and 10. Play action fake, rolling right. Throwing up the right sideline. Man wide open. But he threw it out of bounds. Again, Zardovitz only completed about 44% of his passes coming into the year. He is 9 for 16 tonight. Not coming into the year. On the year, coming into the night. And that's what happens when I try to say something while I'm thinking about something else. Outside linebacker number 46, Christian Cockrell won defensive MVP last week. We're going to need another big performance right here on this set of downs. Two men in the backfield. Yeah. Yes. Keeps, heads right up the line. He should have given it off. Only going to get a yard. Excellent defense. Great job, Jake McAnally, number 31. Did a oh, great Jake. job splitting that difference between the pitch man and the quarterback and taking out the pitch completely and then that ability to just jump at those legs and bottle them up for no gain. That's what you need out of the senior captain. Unfortunately, that puts them in third and long, like we said before. <laughs> we got them right where they want us. Gosh. <laughs> Come on, Black Rain. We need you to get, you know, stand strong right here. This is the scariest down all season for Cedar Park, and we've got them in third and long. Give the running back up the middle. Can't get much. That's terrifying. Maybe on four to the 48. That's terrifying on a third and long. They're comfortable with running it up the middle. I, I know. That's, yeah. not, that's I know. not a good sign. <laughs> now it's fourth down, and they have not liked to punt all night, only done it twice. And that is so interesting. They went for fourth inside the 25, and then they went for four you know, fourth on the other side of the field. Here at no man's land, I'm not even thinking twice about this one. Uh, about when you're going two for, for two. It, if you're going for it, you mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. I would, I'd go for it here too. Yeah, it makes no sense. So watch for the fake, in other words. Number 19, the defense, or the tight end is. Micah Collins, putter tight end. The line of scrimmage is the 48, oh. gets it away. 10, 20. Oh, that's kick catch interference. Yeah, Throw that. There it is. There it Thank is. you. <laughs> Cecil spotted it. Our guy's calling fair catch, and as he's trying to run to the ball, a guy runs right in front of him and kind of clips him a little bit. Flags down right there. The punt was about 32 yards. So we've traded possessions. We've both scored. The black rain finally hangs tough. 
time. Yes. It's time to put the foot on the gas like we've been doing. And I mean, offensively, we've got 23 points. We're moving the ball down the field. I mean, we're we're making good plays, and I think it's going to be play action. They're You're waving, waving it off. that off? How do you wave it off? They decided wow. he didn't do it. I was already logging it in. Oh, my gosh. Well, he clearly did it. He clearly did it. Okay. 18-yard line for Cedar Park. Here comes your basic 82-yard touchdown drive in five plays. Hey, play That's doctor ordered. Interesting that the crowd is quiet enough we can hear Pell's clap. <laughs> I mean, for a home game and uh, a Maynard Mustang team that could finish second, not the biggest home crowd. We're right here. There it was again. We're right here behind them, too. Into the line. A nice run. I think that's Mundell. Let's check the number. Tyree. Tyree Nicholson. Great job on first down. And those Doughboys, they did a great job getting to those backers and giving Tyree an opportunity to not dodge tacklers right at the line. 14 yards and a first down. Back to throw. Throws left side. Has a man on the sideline and out of bounds. And is incomplete. I'm all right with that incompletion because that was covered pretty dang well. Um, gives us a fighting chance right there. That was almost undercut for an interception. Josh's first incomplete pass of the second half. It's 2.58 left in the third. Only our second possession of the second half. We are one for one on touchdown drives in the second half. Let's make it two for two. Molinaro in motion right to left. There's the clap back to throw. Steps forward, he's gonna run. Has some room, but he slides down at the 36. It's a short gain of about four yards. Gives us a fighting chance and no need to force anything in coverage right there. And Pell's legs have been super useful tonight. Yeah, it's been an excellent additional weapon uh, for this evening. Haven't seen a whole lot of it, but he's definitely brought it out tonight. Third and six from the 36. We need the 42. Love the single coverage on Joseph Edwards. By action fake, throws, screen pass to Nichols, left side, he's got the first down. Wow. He needed six, he got seven. That is an athletic play from the junior tight end to know where the sticks are, didn't string it out to the sideline, got north and south, and made an acrobatic play for the first down. Up to the line quickly, first and 10 from the 43. Pell gives to the running back into the line, not much there, but he does manage to get about three out of it. Across the 45 to the 46, and that was Tyree Nicholson again. Gavin Mundell checking in to spell him right now, and still that looked like it was going for nothing, found a way to plow for three. Those were tough yards. Nicholson is a surprisingly tough inside the tackles runner for his size. He's not a big guy. You wouldn't think he could get a lot of yards in there, but he can fool you. They're going to do it with Mundell left side, breaks through the hole, 40, 35, 30, 25, and they're hanging on to him down to the 20. Gavin Mundell, outstanding job. A little thunder and a little dose of lightning right there. Gavin Mundell was so fast through that line of scrimmage. I think everybody was kind of fooled by how quickly he did. Great play fake, though, by Pell. 34 oh. yards and a carry this time, upset in the backfield back at the 20. We didn't have a chance to even get the first down stick set up. <laughs> Tempo offense was going so well. I believe, was that Mundell again? Yes. Yeah, Mundell's checking out the game right now with a bit of a limp. Tyree checks line. in for him. Second down and 10. Play action fake. Josh looking, drifting left. He throws towards the end zone. It's a man back oh, there. There's a flag. Oh, that's a flag. That's somebody held somebody in the end zone. Ooh, I'm them. calling it defensive right now. Yeah, okay. the way the Maynard Mustangs are reacting is not a good sign for them. Wow, this would be a huge play on second and long. That was about to force third and 10 inside, uh, almost yeah. inside the red zone. That would be a huge gift. Kevin Adams checking in the backfield now. Oh, yes, Lord. Somebody block for that man. Please. All right, here comes the white hat. Tell Give us, us a what good it one. Is. Pass interference, defense. Oh. They still have to hold your breath. Down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really do. Oh, my goodness. That automatic first down is huge. Having another tight end check into the ball game. The sophomore, number 81. This Maynard defense is on its heels right now. Great opportunity for the for the Cedar Park offense. Adams in the backfield next to Josh Pell. Let's close the gap. Gives to Adams. No, Pell's running to the right side. Touchdown. With yes! Who did he hit? I was 11. 11. 11, that's Nichols. There's this little machine here was blocking my way. I didn't see who caught it. All right, nice job by the Timberwolves. 
That was huge. I mean, can make it a four-point game with this extra point. And Cedar Park, definitely no need to chase the two points right now. Let's just keep chipping away. Nichols on that eight-yard touchdown now has six catches for 101. Bell, his second touchdown throw of the night. That's good. Kick is up and good. Narrow, mar uh, the margin is narrowed once more. 57 seconds left in the third. Our new score, 34-30. Maynard, we'll be right back. Army Ant Moving calls Cedar Park home. They are Cedar Park movers that you can count on. Army Ant Moving stands above the rest. Their reputation speaks for itself. They received the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last two years. Their staff is professionally trained and certified, so you can be assured that your cherished household possessions are in good hands, whether you're leaving, arriving, or just relocating to the Cedar Park area. Call them today for a fast, free, and competitive moving quote at 800-497-5828. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football on Flow Sports TV, powered by the the Vite Live Network. Miles Kokenauer here, along with Brad Cohn, uh, Josh Willard, and Cecil Kokenauer. Dondra McBenu, our QA. All right, good job. Again, that touchdown brought to you by T.J. Lewis Realty. Thank you, Josh. I seem to forget that a lot. Sorry, TJ. <laughs> this kick deep and into the end zone. Bar feeling a little bit of adrenaline on that. Or rather, Gaisler, the Norwegian nightmare. And that was a great place to ball as a kick. That was right at the goal line. And so for a return specialist that's got speed, that's not into the end zone. So sometimes they might go back there and receive that one. I thought that was a perfectly placed ball. Last two possessions, first two possessions of the second half, Cedar Park has closed an eight. 18 point gap wow. down to four. Got an opportunity in the black rain, figured it out last possession, getting him to punt for the first time tonight. Really need to channel that energy again. We need a turnover. Had an interception in the first half, didn't do anything with it. Need a turnover right here. Sardavets with two men in the backfield. Gives to Joyner. Joyner goes right side, gets by a guy. We had him tackled for a loss. Instead, he's going to get 11 on the first down. Stop me if you've heard that one before. That was a good job, and it looked like Big Murr made a good push, but a great cut again in the backfield by Joyner just extends the play and gives him an opportunity to get to the outside. And Joyner again, a junior. So we're going to get a heavy dose again next year. Joyner the junior. If we're in the same district, we're oh, have to see how all that sifts out. Just shy of the 36-yard line for Maynard, their own. And the right hash. One receiver left, two right, or the other way around. Into the line again with a running back. He puts his shoulders down and gets a couple to the 38. I think that was Joyner. Yeah, it was. And that time right there, that was the first really ball carry that I've seen Joyner kind of hesitate at the line of scrimmage, but it was because of that D-line and those linebackers filling the holes and just making their nowhere to go. And great job by that defense playing physical. Wow, already at the end of the fourth? Already at or the end, end of the, the third. third. Huh. End of the third. All right. Here we come, down just four, 34-30. We'll be right back. Experience the difference at Toyota of Cedar Park, one of the Austin area's newest automobile dealerships. Their new vehicle department will always stock the newest Toyota models you need. The pre-owned vehicles they choose must each pass a rigorous inspection and be in tip-top shape before they make it to their lot or website for you to see. And if you're looking for budget-friendly Toyota-certified used vehicles, they've got you covered. And you can rest easy knowing that the best new cars make the best used cars. That's Toyota of Cedar Park at toyotaofcedarpark.com. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. All right, here we go. Second and eight. The snap gives it to the line to join her. Yeah. And this time he does not break three. It's about a yard loss. 
Man who gets off the bottom of the pile for Cedar Park is Luke Kaharski. Luke Kaharski as well as Jake McAnally did a good job swarming to the football. I'm telling you, the senior leadership that we've got on the defensive side of the ball, they've been here, they've done that, and we need to do it again right now. Unfortunately, it's third and nine. Okay. <laughs> it's going to pay for us right here, I promise. It's going to pay. It's going to pay. Sooner or later, it's got to happen. George Wheeler, lock up. Don't let people turn corners. Zarda Vets with two backfield mates. Play action fake, rolling right, throwing deep into coverage. And Abuko can't make the catch. Great coverage. Outstanding job by the guy named Michael Putney. Excellent, excellent def defense by sure Putney. Was. He, hey, I don't, I don't care. I still think he's one of the best D-backs in the area. I agree. Great, great job, Michael Putney. I wish he had a little more size, and schools would be really interested in him. Quality of play is without doubt very good. You just hold your breath, too, as Chayna Buku gets past Michael Putney right there. If he has a comp, a, a, comp, a, a comparable quarterback that can, you know, put the air under it and not underthrow these deep passes, they probably would have taken a lot more of these to the house. And Nobuko, the last 10 yards, had a stiff arm on Putney, keeping him away. I knew it wouldn't be called, but he certainly was stiff arming him. There's the kick. That's 10, out of bounds. 20. Oh, it does Ooh. go out of bounds. It walked that up to almost a 50. Where are you going to put that one? Oh, they didn't the give them much on that. They didn't give them much on that at all. It's a 16, 19-yard punt. All right. Black but, rain. Yeah, we'll take that. Two straight punts for the black rain. That's exactly what you need. We're figuring it out. Offensively, I think we're getting some momentum back, too, and you got to think all the Mustangs are shaking right now. In their last six possessions, dating back into the second quarter, I believe, Josh, they've got four punts and two touchdowns. Wow. I mean, here comes Josh. Touchdown drive here will give us the lead in the fourth quarter. Tyree checks out late. Gavin Mundell in. There's a snap. Give to Mundell to the right side. Not much there. He stretches forward. He's going to get about three to the 48, second and seven. And Gavin had a defensive lineman that was wrapped up around his waist and trying to pull him back. But Gavin Mundell showing that strength, finishing forward. Yeah, I love that. Second down from the 48. Back to throw his Pell. Pump fake, throws down the right oh, sideline, and there's a pick, and he's probably going to take it back. No, not all the way down to the 12. Very similar to Luke, very similar to Luke Kaharski's interception earlier. They faked on the screen, had Cody Marshall open on the wheel. Way too much air under that ball. You needed to put that on a rope back shoulder. 48 yards on that interception return. Yeah, that's not that's not rewarding your black rain for an awesome second half so far. We were right there again. Ready to drive in the fourth quarter to take a lead. Couldn't couldn't get that done. And hey, that's football. And the return yards on that interception was lethal. Oh yeah. Forty eight yards on that one. I didn't catch the number of the guy who did it, but so be it. So here they come, the Mustangs, trying to push that lead back up to 11. First and 10 at the 13 left hash. Back to throw. Fade to the left corner of the end zone. That can't make the catch. Wow. George Good Wheeler. Good defense mm. by George. Great job. Physical. And their guy's down. A physical play Get back at the catch, and George Wheeler, when you're outsized by two feet, that's what you got to do. you got to have focus and watch that football when he's bringing it in to tuck it. Be active with those hands, and don't, don't let him make it easy. Zardovets now just two for his last seven for 20 yards. Wow. Gives to the running back into yes. the line joiner. Linebackers grab him. He's going to get maybe two, maybe one. So, unfortunately, we're at third and nine again. They've, they've done great, though, in the second half. We're doing good on yep. third down and long, and so need to do it again one more time. Hold them oh, to a field hold goal. Hold to that field goal here. And that it keeps was, it a one-possession game still. Yeah, make it just a seven-point margin. Wow, that would be unreal. How about a scoop and score of about 90 yards? That missed extra points really killing us. Of course, they missed one, too, so that's even Steven. Chardovets inside give. Not much wow. there. He's going to get a couple, maybe, maybe only one. I mean, that was a great play design by Maynard trying to do that backdoor shovel pass, and 
I mean, everybody stayed at home for Cedar Park. You couldn't have asked for a better play uh, defensively on third and long. And now with this fourth and long, you got to think they're taking points for sure. They do send on the field oh, goal I would unit. If I were them. And number 45, Omar Otario, the junior kicker, is going to try it from about 30 yards. How about a block return for a touch? So we'll line up on the 18. So it'll be a, uh, the 19, a 29 yarder. 29 yarder from the left hash. Not much wind to deal with. What wind there is is behind him. Hold is coming out of the senior, Damian Salazar, backup quarterback. It was high, but he gets the Oh, that's, down. that's no good. It. That's no good. He, he missed, missed it. it. Hold it off to the left. Oh, my goodness. That must have been a prayer from Brady Elford right there. We really, <laughs> need, we really needed that one, buddy. We needed it. We got an opportunity. We got the rock. Nine minutes to go. Black Rain holding three straight possessions in the second half. 48-yard interception return goes for nothing except wow. for slowing us down. Still just down four. 9.01 left in the game, 34-30. Truly turning out to be a wild and fun game. Ye old barn burner. I could use the warmth. It's kind of cold out there. I mean, there. a lot on the line. A home playoff game on the line. Ball moved to the 20. As it is an amateur football. And this field goal inside the 20. Two receivers left, one right for Pell. Give to the running back. Dancing in the backfield. because oh, oh, Blocking oh, oh. somehow gets through a non-existent hole and gets himself eight oh, yards. Kevin Adams. What a run by Kevin Adams. He slipped it in the backfield <laughs> and was still able to keep his feet and then <laughs> make some more moves. First carry of the second half by Adams. 11 for 28. Good. Good pitch and catch right there for the first. Who did he hit? I was looking down. Uh, Grant Nichols. Grant Nichols on that one. Having a great game tonight and becoming a new favorite target for Pell. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Tempo offense gets me behind. Okay, here we go. First and 10, Cedar Park. Just inside their own 35-yard line. Pell fakes a shovel forward, rolls right. Look at Oh, got Nichols. Goes down the sideline to Nichols, but batted away. He would have been out of bounds if he'd caught it anyway. Interesting play. It looked interesting in the backfield. Some misdirection. Yeah, fake that shovel pass underneath, and that's been the kind of bread and butter for the last two years for Cedar Park. So if you're watching film and they get in that formation, I'm saying watch for the reverse, you know, underneath. And, I mean, that play action off of that play, that's a really good play. Yeah. Second and ten. Two wing backs back to throw. Pell. Throws right side, has a man in the middle, but can't pull it down. That was Tyree. Oof. Good defensive play made by Isaiah Crosby. He's the guy who picked it off a minute ago. Incomplete, third down. Big play on third down. Boy, this is huge. Yeah, this is huge for sure. The way the Black Rain is playing right now, I'm not in four down territory. They're doing a good job stopping them here in the second half. 8.23 left in the game, down four. Third and 10, just shy of our own 34. Fell takes the snap. Play action fake to Adams. Throws across the middle on the right oh, side. Oh, what a shot. Oh, what a shot. He hit him, but he couldn't hang on to it because the defensive play was Edwards, and it's fourth down. Did he lead with his head? Come on. <laughs> Can't slow it down in high school to throw that like they do in the NFL. Yeah. But, man, that was, that was a great pitch and catch, but a great closing speed from Maynard and jarred that ball loose. Pell going through another bad stretch. Just two for his last eight for 23 yards and a pick. Oh, they Here almost got the that kick. one. That's a good 10, kick. 20, 30. One, two, three. 33 yards and a kick. They will start at their 33. Sophomores had a great game punting. Shooty. 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 Yes, he shoot. He shoot, shooting or shooting up? Shop Academy in-store online at academy.com, and you can find the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, Vans, and more. Academy makes shopping convenient with curbside and in-store pickup available for online orders. Hate to ask you again, Black Rain, but we need another <laughs> stop. I don't know how many you got in you tonight. First down from their 33. Sarvet gives to Joyner running. 
in the backfield. They almost had him for an eight-yard loss. Instead, he gets around the corner, and he's going up the sideline for a long distance. What? And a and touchdown. he's going to go what? for a touchdown. Oh, my God, folks, that should have been an eight-yard loss, and there were three missed tackles in the backfield. Wow. Oh, so my goodness. 67 yards. I mean, that, that is truly what the pursuit drill is for the Black Rain. They do it every day in practice where if the ball is taken to the other side, that backside corner has got to get to the opposite side of the field, taking a diagonal track, and there is nobody in position. And all that progress we made to close that gap has just been burned. 7.53 on the clock now. His third 70-yarder. 67 on that one. Oh, gosh. Well, you count from where he was hit in the backfield, <laughs> it was going to be a over 70 yard. Kick is up. Kind of weak, but good. 7.53 left in the game. New score. Mainer 41, Cedar Park 30. We'll be right back. Army Ant Moving calls Cedar Park home for movers that residents and businesses can rely on for outstanding moving expertise and trustworthy estimates. Army Ant Moving stands above the rest. Their reputation speaks for itself. They've received the Angie's List Superior Service Award for the last two years. Their movers are highly trained and experienced. So whether you need to move your household to a new home across town or an entire corporate office to a new location, your valuables are in knowledgeable and reliable hands with Army Ant Moving Company. Check them out at armyantmoving.com. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football on the Vibe Live Network on Flow Sports TV as well. As Houston Molinaro just takes the kick, he's going to take it back towards the middle of the field, cuts it back towards the sideline, and breaks a tackle <laughs> out past the 40, <laughs> put it on his back. Houston Molinaro, great field position out to the 46-yard line. 35 yards on that return by Molinaro, which takes his average of five kickoff returns up to 23.2 tonight, which is better than we usually do. Something we haven't done a good job of is returning kickoffs this year. Tonight, Molinaro has taken that chore on his back, and he's doing a great job. I'm getting, I'm getting multiple texts that if you watch that uh, jarred loose play, that was 100% targeting. Ah. Here comes Pell and company. 54 yards away from narrowing this back to a four-point margin. we got 7.46 on the clock. Give. Is that Mundell? Tyree. To Tyree, Tyree to the right side for seven. Cross midfield to their 48, second down. Great job by Tyree navigating through traffic, taking it towards the outside and finding a crease and getting upfield. The snap, Pell, play action fake, throws, complete right side. This was to Edwards. He's going to get the first down on about a five-yard completion. Two quick plays and another big first inside Mustang territory. we got to keep rolling. Pflugerville beats out Hendrickson 24-21. All right, that's a good deal. That's kind of what we thought might happen. Here we go again, Tyree right side. Look at him oh run. My gosh. Tyree with a great job, nine yards on that one. Little extracurriculars going on with Cody Marshall and his defender. Cody Marshall as a receiver just planted his guy. <laughs> oh, this oh. blows. What happens oh. here? What happens here? Mater player is down. Oh, Mater looks guy like, is down. Okay. Looks like cramps or something, maybe. We're going to take this break with him, Cecil, I think. We'll be back in just a minute. Cedar Park on the march. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. All right, here we go, back from the break. 
Cedar Park, play action fake to Cody. He's throwing deep over the middle into double coverage. And our, our receiver was, as I said, double coverage. He did a good job playing DB to bat that one away. It was Grant Nichols. Still like taking a shot down the field on second and short, but we've, yeah. I mean, if you're going to do that, you got to play big boy football here on this third and short. And again, it's not going to be up the A-gap with this big defensive line that Maynard has. We've got to start attacking the outside. Uh, but Tyree, though, he's been making it happen. But we got Kevin Adams checked in, baby. Let's see what we can do. Third and one. This is a man's play. you got to want it enough to get the first down. Pell keeps it going left side. He's oh. being chased, and he goes down. He slipped, I think, trying to make it to the corner. Loses five on the play. And yeah, that was just not the right read. Kevin Adams had numbers and blockers yeah. out in front. And I know Pell's just trying to, you know, maybe catch him sleeping. But you truly have to read that defense. And if they collapse down or if they stay on you like that and stay outside, you got to give it. Good chance the regular season's on the line here. The second place possibilities on the line. We're going to think about it. Fourth down, we'll think about it. It's fourth and about five. We'll stay here with them and think it over with them. 37-yard line, left hash. I'm, I'm still trying to attack the middle of the field. That's where all, where all of our holes have opened up for passes and even, you know, attempts at making big plays. And that last jarred loose hit, um, that was still, I mean, on target, found an open hole, just have to make that tough catch in traffic. So I think the middle of the field is going to be open. Doughboys, got to give Pell some time. Two receivers over 100 yards, seven catches, 109 yards for Grant Nichols, a 15.6 average. And Cody Marshall had the same numbers that he did at halftime. So not one catch here in the second half, five receptions, 113 yards. No touchdowns, importantly for Marshall, too, who has been a touchdown machine this year along with Gruyon. Boy, are we missing Nick Gruyon tonight. Yeah. And, and especially for that just deep down the field threat, he has that ability to go high point at being an amazing all-state high jumper. Uh, just gives you that other dimension in an offense when you have a guy that you can truly throw a one-on-one -on -one to. Oh, my goodness. Here we are. Big, big play in this season for Cedar Park. Fourth and five from the 38 of Maynard. Fourth and six almost. In motion goes Cody, right to left. Play action fake, looking. Get him right there. Looking for him. He has Cody, first but down. it's Houston good. Molinaro. It's Molinaro for the first down. He needed just a uh, needed five, and he got 13. Got Excuse me. I can't in. add when I'm excited. <laughs> he needed five, and he got seven. Beautiful play design as Cody Marshall went in motion from the opposite side and kind of went ran a wheel route. And Houston Molinaro, perfect cut at the top of the route. Three catches for 28 yards, all important for Molinaro now. Nobody in the backfield. He said Pell back to throw, throws over the middle, has a man, Nichols, at about the 20. Good pitch and catch right there. Good for eight. Second down. Clock is still moving at 530. Got to get into the end zone quick. Yep, got to get another stop and then mount another march. Nichols lines up behind the right guard. Gavin Mundell next to Josh Pell. He, he fakes it to him, throws to the right side. Edwards with the catch, and he'll make it down to about the 11. You say offsides? Outside. Oh, outside. outside. Yeah, it, great cut. <laughs> it was a great vision by Joseph Edwards. And again, on these wide receiver screens tonight, it is the most accurate Pell has been. It's always been in stride to where they can turn up field super easy. And then the outside blocking, too. The receivers are getting it done on the outside. 23 completions for Pell tonight. Unfortunately, three picks that have made a difference. Got to run Pell. First down, Pell throws into the left side of the end zone. Complete. Second down. Thankfully, it stops that clock off the incomplete, so. 4.39 to go. You just hate getting a first down right at the 10 yard line. Yeah, second and goal from <laughs> no 10 chance yards of away. No downs. <laughs> yeah, tough way to do it. Brings him up, snap. Inside, Adams. Running, trying to go right side. He'll only get maybe a yard before he's out of bounds at the nine. Will they give him the eight? Yes. 
two yards, third and goal. It looked like a good play design because Maynard just definitely over pursued and it looked like Kevin Adams had a bunch of real estate to run, but he just stretched it out towards the sideline. I am thinking the same thing. When I was watching, I thought he should have cut upfield or downfield at least get quicker. Four to five yards instead of two. Adams still in there, third and goal from about the eighth. Back to throw, throwing left side. Has a man complete at about the eight. Oh, oh fumble. Image, and he fumbled the ball, and they're going to – Oh, they ran it for a while and fumbled it Oh, we it got back. it back. <laughs> we might have gotten it back, and since they had the ball, we got a first down, although wow. it will be out at the 38. And that is what it's going to be called. They're motioning first down. Oh, they're motioning fourth down. No, it should be first down. They got possession of the ball. We got it back. There we I've go. I've seen that rule many times. Yeah, don't screw it up, referees. We don't get credit for a made first down, but we do have the ball with a first down. Very unfortunate, though, losing that many yards and just with the clock situation. Actually, that might be the best thing that could have happened to us because, <laughs> you know, that catch is going to lose yardage. It's going to be fourth and goal from about the nine. I don't know. I'd like our chances from here better with a first and ten. I think the officials are going to have to Google this rule. They are so – they're not on the same terms, and Maynard Mustangs coaches might be pressuring them into a fourth down. Not fourth down. You got the ball. If you never had possession of the ball, it would be fourth down. Oops. I've seen this in other games at many levels, and uh, that's, that's the rule. Well, while the referees are trying to obtain the knowledge I already have <laughs> – Look at this defense on first down. What are they well, doing? they're changing that down marker to fourth. It's not. Yeah, they're calling down. it fourth down. That's why. That is wrong. Wow. They've dropped into a prevent defense. That is wrong. If he was just bobbling it that whole time, and I didn't see it that way, I just thought it's he, fourth I thought down. He Once he one, gets two. possession and is running with it, that's their ball now. And then they fumbled away, and it's now our ball first down, wherever that is. I've seen that happen many times. You got five Maynard Mustang defenders standing at the 10 yard line. So here we go. We're gonna get the ball way out here if we can't convert this or at least gain a lot of yards. Pell throws to the right side, has a man, he hits him, but is he in bounds or not? He is. Thankfully, it just gives us some more breathing room and gives our defense a chance. 3.57 on the clock. It is uh, it's slipping away. That was Edwards on the gain of 28 yards. But fourth down and goal <laughs> from about the 45, so the 28 yards really didn't do anything better than a 28-yard punt. Maynard has the offense to run clock for sure, and that's if we can tackle him. Yeah. Pell now with 320 yards through the air with 24 completions, but three picks. Well, Cedar Park uh, has not gotten screwed by the referees overall in this game, but they did on that one. Mm. Run to the right side. Takes them from their 17 out to about their 26. Nine yards and a second down. 3.38 on the ticking clock. Mm. Of course, that call may not have lost them the game, but it sure lost them the momentum. Uh, uh, on their way to a score that would have narrowed the margin back down to four points. Yeah, there, there is too many other things that have happened in this game yeah. to blame it on that yeah, call right there. Absolutely because, true. I mean, the three turnovers for us and just missing on opportunities. End of the line. Joiner. Got the not first. much, but enough for the first. He needed two. Uh, needed one, and he got two. The clock keeps ticking. Yeah, after this play, you're burning your first time out. 386 rushing yards. 386? For, for, for the Mustang. Rushing? 307, 307 for Joiner. Wow. But well over two-thirds of that, 216 on three runs. 216. <laughs> They've done a pretty <laughs> decent job against him except for those three runs. And those are 21 points on an 11-point margin. Oh. Make three tackles and we're... Maybe up by 10. Make four tackles. Please, please, oh, please. <sighs> mm -hmm. 
Mercy. Well, we're our own worst enemy. That one is 62 yards in a touchdown. Well, I, I would say Quentin Joyner is the player of the year. Well, I'm telling you, as the keeper of the record books, he's going to end up probably being the having the greatest single running back performance ever against Cedar Park in uh, 283 games played in uh, 23 years. I think they got an unsportsmanlike at the end for celebrating. Oh, my goodness, man. It, 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 the angles and, and tackling, I mean. You know, the angles shouldn't mean anything because before an angle was miscalculated, three guys could have brought him down and didn't do it. Very true. Unsportsmanlike on Maynard. He's a good running back, but we're making him look even better than he really is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he pretty much stopped right at the at the line of scrimmage and then took off again. Uh, and had him had him dead to rights right there. Yeah. All right. So we are going to probably end up with the most yards we have ever had in a regular season game loss. We are at 502 right now. And it's looking like that 12 game road district win streak is going to be the left in Maynor, yeah. 223 left. We're now down 48 to 30. We'll be right back. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or mungiarealestate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football and Flow Sports TV, powered by the Vibe Live Network. The Willard of Oz here along with Brad Cohn, Cecil Kokenauer, Miles Kokenauer, and Cody Wilson. And our QA tonight is DeAndre McBenu and another long touchdown by Quentin Joyner of 62 yards. Now his total 369 rushing touch or rushing yards. Feels like 369 touchdowns. And Josh, go ahead and call this kickoff return. Hopefully Molinaro busts another good one. Well, I'm going to be looking up our most yards rushing given up total here. This kickoff from the Mustangs from their own 25 with a 15-yarder penalty at the end of that touchdown. So there is going to be some good field position, 223 on the clock, but trailing 18, that is a big hole to get out of. And with the kick coming, Cody Marshall, Houston Molinaro deep. They do decide to squib it at Cody Marshall. That one's going to go out of bounds. So that one out of bounds. like to think that they're just going to take the good field position as well. And I've got that record now. He is still 10 yards short of Leander's Mike Kearns, 379 and four touchdowns in, uh, in 2003. Oh, my gosh. That's back when they ran the people ran the ball. <laughs> yeah. We're in a passing day now. We're yeah. giving up 369. Uh, the wing T days. Yeah. He is over 2,000 yards rushing on the season. Came into the game with 17 and change. Has 369 now. He's pushing 2,100 yards rushing on the season and a significant percentage of that against us. So they are going to re-kick because of those penalty yardage. you got to think that we might get another opportunity. They check a new kicker into the ball game as well. Um, and so, Brad, do we have – will we know who we play in the playoffs after this game? Well, if we can look up some scores yeah. – from that other, what, what yeah, is we're, that? I don't, I, you know, I think I saw that there wasn't any way that that thing was going to change. Let me see right. what I can find here. Uh, see what Johnson, Buta Johnson's score was. Do you know what district that is? This is 12 5A. If Seguin lost to Driven Springs, they'll play the two here. That'd be Maynard. We would get due to Johnson, I believe. Oh, but my gosh. Dripping Springs almost lost. That was last night. Oh, wow. Um, they, lost, they, they won 32-31. Here's the kick. Cody Marshall's going to get Cody Marshall it. at the 26. Straight up the field. Cross midfield down to their 42. Pretty darn good return. I really like what the return unit's been doing tonight. They've really—that's—that's that's one bright spot of this game—is—is—is yeah. is, is how they've been returning the ball. 
That was 32 yards for Marshall, so our team average on six kickoff returns. You never won six kickoff returns, though. It's 24.7. Not bad. And Lehman right now losing to Veterans Memorial. And then Johnson on top of Canyon, 30 to 20. Okay. We will likely play Johnson. We're going to fall to the three seed. I guess there's also a possibility we go to a four. But I think if George Premier is gone. This one into the line. Gain of about seven down to the 35. And that was Mundell. Clock ticking just under two minutes now. Got to move quick. 189 yards rushing for Cedar Park. 320 for Pell on 24 completions through the air. Throws complete to the right side. Is he going to have enough? I think they'll give him enough for the first down. Just at the sticks. Just needed about two. And who was that? I think it was 14. Who is 14 for Cedar Park? David Duplanchet. Oh, his first reception. Yeah, yeah. And he's a youngster. Watch for me, Josh. Go ahead and call that play. Carter Wall with the wide receiver screen trying to spin out of a tackle but doesn't. Only a gain of two. We'll bring up second and eight, a minute 20 and ticking. Yeah, that's a good play fake on that that there. I, I followed the, 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 the fake handoff up the middle. <laughs> if they would have handed that, man, he was gone. So now second and eight for Pell. Play action. Actually, new quarterback Gavin Bernard, and it looks like the backups are in number 88 with that reception from the Timberwolves. 88 is Jackson Brock. His first reception of the season. How many yards did he get there? Looks like about eight. No, not eight. They got about six. Yep. Basic math is hard for me. Gavin Mundell right up the middle. It's a good run, Gav. Down to the 15. They'll give him the 16. 35 seconds left. Ah, oh, man, we we were right there. Yeah. We had yeah. so many chances tonight. Yeah. Go to the left Got side. Swung down in bounds. <laughs> Quite a ways down to the seven. Stopping the clock at the 17. Mundell. Gain on the play of about nine for Gavin. Of course, they've probably got their second guys in as well. 17 seconds left on a stopped clock. Shippard trying for an honor touchdown. Gavin Bernard rolling right, throwing into the end zone, incomplete. Holding flags everywhere. Oh, boy. 12 seconds left. So a 12-game road district winning streak that goes back three years by the board. We have our first non-winning regular season in 16 years. Block below the waist. Block below the waist. Let's log that one. Only our third penalty tonight. That's got to tell you a bad game. Yeah. <laughs> it's really <laughs> weird how that is such a reliable <laughs> indicator. I just don't get it. It's not just this year. It's something we noticed with Absex teams the last several years as well. Yeah, I'm. A, if I'm a senior captain, I'm calling a players' meeting, and we're getting everything right this week. You got to come into playoffs just with your grease hot. Gavin Mundell in at running back. Gavin Bernard, the quarterback. Two Jackson. Gavins in the backfield. That's a first. Jackson, Brock, Eli, Lackey, receivers. Eli on with us Tuesday night. This one's a give to Mundell up the middle. Whew, that was going for his helmet. It was. He <laughs> swing, yeah. swung a fist at him, and Gavin goes down to the 14. Gain of about eight. And that's it. And that's the ball game. Let's do this one quick. Final score, Cedar Park Falls 48 to 30. Let's give you – we're not going to go to a break, so we'll just okay. give the stats real quick and close out. 26 first downs to 23 in favor of Cedar Park. Rushing yards, we are at 39 for 214, a 5.49 average, which isn't bad. Maynard, though, 36 for 448 yards on the ground, a 12.44 average. Through the air, uh, a high night for his career for Pell in both completions, 
attempts and yardage. Unfortunately, there were three picks. He was 27 for 48, 332 yards, completed 56.25%, 6.92 yards per attempt. They complete just nine passes out of 18, one pick, 146 yards, 8.11 yards per attempt. Total offense, pretty close. Maynard had 594, Cedar Park with 546. Nabucco, three carries for 40 yards. Zar, uh, Zardovic, quarterback, five for 13. Uh, Marvin Bibbs, one for 25, was a touchdown. Isaiah Crosby, one for one. That was what the rest of their rushing game did. Quentin Joyner, a guy who apparently was creased with butter and guys were ordered not to tackle, 26 for 369. And four touchdowns, 14.2 yards per carry. The touchdowns were 72, 77, 67, and 62, that's right, 278 out of 369 were on the four touchdown runs. Got less than 90 yards on every other carry combined. Uh, that's absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. That, that one player like that, when we knew coming into the game having 10.8 yards per carry, that was going to be the guy that we have to take out. Um, but Maynard, hats off to them. They played a good football game. Um, God, but I say that lightly because Cedar Park had so many chances oh, to go really ahead and did. put the nail in the coffin and you know get back to Cedar Park football. But I mean, Maynard, a great season for them, a great season for Weiss being the district champions, and Cedar Park has got to get back into the film room. You're right. They had so many chances to put the nail in the coffin, and instead they hit their thumb with a hammer. Mm. I'm not going to give you their team receivers. Only one guy caught more than one pass. There, there wasn't much. Look at us. Adams just 30 yards on 12 carries. Pell, 69 on 9, a 7.7 average. Nicholson, 7 carries, 39 yards. Pretty good 5.6 average. Mundell, 11 carries, 76 yards, 6.9 for Gavin Mundell. Pell, uh, 25 for 46 through the air with three picks, 324 yards, 7.04 yards for attempt. Bernard, 2 for 2 for 8 yards and incompletion thrown in the end zone, but that was called back on a holding belly, so it didn't get charged with that. Molinari, 3 catches, 28 yards, and an 8-yard touchdown. Joseph Edwards, 5 for 48. Cody Marshall, 113 yards on five catches, but no scores. Carter Wall, three for 16. Grant Nichols, eight for 117. Actually, our leading receiver tonight, first time ever. Eight-yard touchdown in there and a 65-yard catch and run in there. Tyree, one for four catch. And uh, Brock, with his first career catch, one for six, and those are your numbers. Yeah, I mean, just an upsetting performance because Cedar Park, again, I mean, they were moving the ball so well and just kind of shooting themselves in the foot and – you know, the turnovers, that's got to get minimized. Um, and then defensively, I mean, it's it's back to basics this next week. We just got to work on form tackling. Cecil, any last words before we get out of here? Uh, no, I think you all hit the nail on the head there. Um, you know, this is a, it's a dis just a disappointing loss. But you know what, man? Still love this school, still love this squad, and uh, um, looking forward to, uh, to a rebound uh, come first round of playoffs. All right, then. We do have the playoffs ahead of us. Have a chance still to win a state championship, believe it or not. Uh, we, we are optimists. And so the Timberwolves stumble for the third time in district play, the second time in a row, falling to the Maynard Mustangs 48-30 to on the road. This is only the 76th loss in all of Cedar Park football history, covering 23 seasons. Maynard to 8-2 and two and 6-1. and one. Cedar Park falls to 5-5 five and five and 4-3. and three. They slip to the third seed in the postseason that we know of. It's possible they could be the fourth. No, it isn't because I think – do we have a final on Hendricks and Pflugerville? I don't know that we do or not. It was like 24-21. Uh, 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 Pflugerville ended up winning by three. Okay, yeah, then that cements us at third. This live broadcast of Cedar Park Timberwolf football and flow sports powered by the Vipe Live Network, brought to you by Toyota of Cedar Park, H-E-B, Rudy's Barbecue, Mungia Real Estate, Alzer's Barbecue, our touchdown sponsor, T.J. Lewis Real Estate, Army Ant Moving, Wofford Bank, and Santa Catarina Mexican Restaurant. Remember, Timberwolf Night in America, Tuesday night, Josh and I will have the trainers on at 7.30 p.m. Central Time right here on the Vipe Live Network, live from Santa Catarina. For Vipe Live, Media Director of Operations, Merle Bertrand, Communication Director Christina Weber, technical support genius Suno Venkat, our voiceover artist Roland Ruiz, all the good folks of the Vibe Network and Flow Sports TV, our QA Deandra McBenu, and my longtime broadcast partners Cecil Kokenauer and Josh Willard. This is Brad Cohn signing off for Flow Sports TV and the Vibe Live Network. Thanks for joining us. God bless and good night.
This presentation of Cedar Park Football was broadcast live by Flow Sports, powered by Vibe Live, sponsored by Toyota of Cedar Park, HEB, Rudy's Barbecue, Mungia Real Estate, Alzer's Barbecue, TJ Lewis Real Estate, Brooklyn Heights Pizza, and Wapped Bank. Remember, you can hit the archives on the Vibe Live site to watch this game again. Be sure to listen to Timberwolf Night in America every Tuesday night on Vibe Live. Check your best source for the date and time of the next Timberwolf football game. Cecil, Josh, and Brad will bring it to you live.